<laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you're too macho to do jazz hands. Uh, they do whatever you got to do. You know man. what that is? This is jazz. Well, are you going to join me in the jazz hands or am I going to be doing? Oh, Probably see? Not. See? Okay. Then, you know, then I'll feel like, you know, I feel like, man, I'm doing it on my own. So, okay, we're live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. <laughs> Only jazz hands for me. Reed is, you know, Reed is too macho right now. And to does, do. That's your words, not mine. Yeah, <laughs> he does not want to be caught doing the jazz hands live. But we are live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. We have our special guest, Reed Henricks, right there. Check him out. Joining us live from uh, the Tennessee areas. There you right? go. Absolutely. Good to have you back on, man. Hey, glad to be on your show. I always enjoy hanging out with you, whether it's in person or here. Yeah, I think the last time you were on was like episode 16 or something like that. And... And this is episode 83. Oh, there you go. You're making it happen. <laughs> so I think you came on somewhere early when we started doing it. So uh, thanks for coming on again. And, um, you know, we don't have any plan of what we want to talk about. I know there's lots of folks hanging out in the chat. So you guys can serve us up some questions, tell us things that you want us to talk about. Maybe, you know, maybe we feel like going there. <laughs> we'll answer a few questions. Sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then anything that you want to talk about, Reed, I don't know if there's stuff going on that you're particularly interested in talking about. I was going to usually what I do here is I remind everyone we have uh, quite a few people hanging out with us tonight, of course, because you're here. And uh, I want to remind everyone to click the thumbs up button, click that thumbs up and then share this video with your family and friends. So, you know, let folks know that we're doing this hangout and they can jump in here, join us. And talk with us and everything. I'm going to go through the live chat really quick, Reed, if you don't mind, and shout out some people who are in there. All right. Okay, so shout out to Rock Humper. <laughs> he was the first one in the chat. Uh, these names are going to be weird. I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, the Tyvin Show, E Rock, Joe Carpenter, Greg 98K, Chris Bullis, What's Up, uh, Tango Hunter, Nerfs, Guns, and Pancakes. CGKY859, Chris B. What's up, Chris B? Mark Wagner, Richard uh, Maunder, and uh, let's see, DC2 Megaboost, The Archangel, Kwood23, Shut Up and Play Your Guitar. It's actually, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people here. Lead Devil, <laughs> uh, Brian Quick. Uh, let's see who else. I'm trying to go through this really quick here and see who's in here. Link Hyrule 03 says hello. Dead Enders and um, uh, that looks like that looks like pretty much who I think I covered everyone in here right now. Let me see if if I missed you, just uh, shout me out and then I will definitely come back. And so you know what? In um, since Rock Humper was number one here in the chat read. I'm gonna let him lead with a question. Okay. But you know, you don't have to answer this. Okay. You don't have to answer this question, but I'll ask you. He wants to know if you shave your eyebrows. Uh, no, I try not to shave my eyebrows. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not really good. Okay, so there you go, man. Since you came in first, you got that question answered. The answer is no. I don't. I don't shave mine either. So there you go. No shaving of the eyebrows around here. Yeah. No, that's that's yeah. not good generally. Yeah. No, I and um I think that my eyebrows, like mine are connected. So <laughs> you know, I like the evil look actually. <laughs> so you know, there you go. All right. So guys, let me know what questions you have for Reed. Uh Doug Prentice wants me to uh shout him out. Gerald Weldon, Smash Hives. We have a whole bunch of people. NRA instructor Dennis. Ken Helmer, Sam Seuss, lots of people uh, coming in right now. So what's up to you guys? So Reed, what's been going on with you, man? Are you doing classes right now? Uh, we just got done doing six days straight. So we did uh, small arms and we did a neighbor of defense on top of that. So that was six consecutive days. Um, so it, it was a pretty, it was a good one. It was a good class, you know, but at, at the end of it all, you know, at the end of it, you've got to, you got to come down. So it's been good. Um, it's been good, but it was tiring. So just been out at the ridge doing some work, you know, doing some things, keeping up on my shooting as well. So um, students, when they come, they see it, they see the they see the presentation, they see the class, but 
you know, when we're not having classes, that's when the real work begins is taking care of the place and keeping it up. Yeah. You know, keeping it, uh, serviceable, you know, weed, you know, putting weed killer on the range, landscaping, mowing takes up a lot of time. Right. So right now we just got done off a six day stretch. So we had a pretty long one with, uh, with some good people. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know what? Um, I forgot, man, that it, you, there's a lot of groundskeeping going on over there. By the way, anyone that wants to ask a question, just do at Hank Strange in the chat and I will look at what your question is you know, or your comment. Yeah, I forgot there's a lot of uh, groundskeeping work that goes on there. And then you used to have goats, but you no longer have the goats. No, I sold them. I sold them to a good family. They just, you know, they were nice, but man, getting in the way of class and things and, you know, I, I care about them. I liked them, but we, they just couldn't, uh, they couldn't be a part of the deal because they just kept getting in the way. So, oh, and we, you don't, I'm going to assume you don't eat goat meat. I mean, you can, you can, oh. you can, do it, yeah. okay. but those ones were pets to you. Those ones were pet and milk. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. Do you miss them? Yeah. Yeah. I miss them. I mean, well, there's one. I mean, one I miss in particular is my Billy Goat. His name was Ted. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I raised him since he was real little, probably, you know, about that big. I mean, he was small when I bought him. And so I raised him. And so he kind of, he was always attached. He always thought he was a lap goat, despite being 300 pounds and having horns that were, you know, <laughs> you couldn't yeah. even, he, he walked in your house, he couldn't fit through your door. His horns or something. Oh, wow. Okay. And that was one of the goats that, because I know that when people come out there or when you had them and people came out to do training and it was lunchtime, you kind of yeah. had to like fight with the goats for your food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. They, they were there. But yeah, I, I enjoy it. You know, one of these days, you know, I may add a little bit more goats and, yeah. you know, get them in. But for right now, there's just too much stuff going on, too much work. And, yeah, you know, it was kind of a, it was kind of a cool thing to, to get everything set up. I mean, there's just been so much work. I mean, this is our third coming up on our fourth training season. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's insane the amount of work that went into it. I mean, there was nothing there. Um, so it's just been a heck of a, of a deal getting everything set up. So, yeah. Um, tiring, but in a very rewarding way, like all good work should be at the end of the day, you should be tired, but not worn out. Right. Absolutely. And, um, and you said you did six straight days. So did you have the same people? Cause I'm assuming it was two classes, right? It was, it was three, three classes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, rifle, there's pistol rifle in the neighborhood defense. So yeah, some of them stayed for more than one. I'd I'd say the overwhelming majority stayed for more than one of them. Um, a lot of couples. We actually have one couple that that comes every year. Last year they got married, so they were here on their honeymoon. Oh and, really? <laughs> yeah, nice. Great people. Great people. Um, yeah. It's a really cool young couple. You know, in their twenties, uh, I think. Yeah, mid mid to early twenties, and then they came back this year for their one year anniversary. So that's kind of a special moment. That's, you know, it's kind of the moments that I really wanted to start the ridge, just so that people could experience moments like that. You know, we're family oriented place. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if uh, you want to leave all the macho head banging crap, like go train somewhere else. But uh, you know how we do it, man. We're uh, we're low key. We're gonna treat you with respect. Um, Cotter is gonna treat you with respect, and you know, it's a place that you'd be proud to bring your kids, your your wife, your husband, whoever it is, and that's really what we wanted to set up. Yeah, that's good. And I see that a lot of couples do come out to the classes. So, yeah. and I think women are training now. I mean, you know how yeah. many women are getting into this, but you know, these women are coming out and they're, they're totally rocking it. You know, they'll come with their husband or their boyfriend, fiance, their dad. You know, we've had a lot of dads. We've had a lot of father daughter people coming too. And that's very, right. you know, that's amazingly special uh, to see that. And it's, you know, it's really an amazing thing uh, when you see older couples, like in their 50s and 60s, that are getting into guns yeah. now. They, you know, just think about that, man. Like, that's one of the best feelings that I've ever had is to have people that are, like, uh, much more experienced, much more seasoned than I am coming there. And they have the confidence in our cadre that they can come and learn. You know, that's a very humbling experience, a very powerful thing in a good way. Mm -hmm. And I just, those moments, you know, where these people come in and do that and it's like their anniversary, you know, they've been married 30, 40 years. You know, those are the moments like that that I, that I really wanted uh, when I started this company. Those were the moments right there. And that's, uh, you can't substitute. It's worth all the hard work. You know, it's mm -hmm. worth it's worth it all when you see them and they're smiling and they're happy. And you know they're going to go home and be able to get it done if, if some idiot decides to attack them. Right. Absolutely. Um, when I was there, I think because I was just recently there for the rifle class. Do you remember when that was? I think I was there like, what, a month ago, two months ago? Yeah, yeah, a few, yeah, a few weeks. Yeah, I think it was either late September or early October. It had yeah. been late September. 
Right. There were actually a few couples that were in my class. I know that I think there was an older couple and then there was a younger couple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that's common. I mean, that's that's in pistol or rifle. It really doesn't matter. Um, that, that happens all the time. I mean, in some classes, we've got anywhere 30, 40 percent women, which is incredible. Yeah. I mean, not, you know, if you go and look at that, um, we're not like geared towards, you know, male or females at all, for sure. But it's a uh, it's inc it's an incredible thing, you know, to see that kind of response for it. And I think, you know, that speaks volumes as to uh, as to the 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 guys taking responsibility and, and making sure that their daughters make sure their wives want to go out and train and get it done. But you know what's surprising? What's really surprising is that an increasing number of women are actually bringing their dudes to the class. Yeah. <laughs> that's, an, that's a really cool thing. And it's not an ego thing, man. You know, you get in there and you see some people, oh, man, I can't let a chick out shoot me. But, you know, I got news for you. You know, a lot of times they will. <laughs> yeah. They follow instructions. You know, they can but listen. Dude, if she's on my side, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm glad if she could out shoot me, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's really a good thing. But, yeah. But yeah, it's, we just have such a large section of people. I mean, we've got a large, I mean, there's guys that are in the military, guys that are in law enforcement, guys right. that are architects, accountants, bankers, students, college students, delivery guys, truck drivers. I mean, you name it. And it's like, they're all coming. Yeah. They're all coming for, for the right reasons, not out of fear, but out of a, a sense of responsibility. And that's a really good thing because I don't, you know, I really don't want people coming here out of fear. I want them to come out of a feeling of responsibility to themselves, to their family, and really to their country, you know, responsibility that it's up to them, um, you know, to be able to get it done when you need to get it done. Because fear, fear is counterproductive. You know, it takes up your own energy and then it's contagious with other people. Um, you know, with other people, they get, oh, man, if that person's afraid, maybe I should be afraid. But mm -hmm. weird thing is about people, man, is that confidence and courage is very contagious. And so that's really what we're trying uh, to go for here is to produce a bunch of, of armed citizens that are confident competent and courageous you know that's i mean look at the name of the company valor ridge right i mean that's our name of our company's valor ridge i mean valor per merriam webster dictionary dictionary is um spirit of body or mind that enables an individual to encounter danger with firmness you know that that's what we're all about and uh it's it's you know more so mental than physical and the people got to get over that mental hurdle a lot of times Mm -hmm. Okay. And I know that uh, when you give these classes, especially the, uh, the the training part, I think, you know, that's uh, probably fun just as much as it's instructional, obviously, for you. But I think the part that I observe that takes a lot out of you is the classroom. Am I wrong in saying that? Um, it does both. It's a double-edged sword. You know, it does mm -hmm. take a lot out of me as far as mental, you know, focus because I'm going to bring it, right? I'm going to bring... Yeah. I'm going to bring it each and every time. I'm going to give everybody my best, no matter what kind of day that I'm having or how little sleep that I've got the night before. You know, you owe it to your people. You owe it to the people that come there to, to go full in 100 percent throttle all day. You know, you owe it to them and you owe it to yourself because you never know when it's going to be your last class. You never know when it's going to be uh, your th one of my one of the guys that I like music a lot, man. And um, me too. One guy. I know I know you do. We talked about that several times, but. You know, one of the guys that I really, you know, as far as a performer, just a pure performer, right? One of the guys that I always admired as just a pure performer on stage was Jim Morrison from The Doors. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, early on in his career, he was there with his girlfriend and, you know, just, I mean, they, they were playing this lounge in this hotel out in California when they were first getting started. So they hadn't made their big hits yet. They're just getting started. And there was like two or three people in the audience, right? And I remember uh, this, this, He's going all out on his vocals and on his moves on the stage. I mean, just incredible mm -hmm. energy being put into this. And I remember when they were driving back home after the gig, his girlfriend asked him, he says, she said, Jim, you know, why did you go so hard on that performance? Why did you put everything out there? I mean, there's only two or three people in the crowd. Mm -hmm. And he looked at her and he said, because you never know when it's going to be your last gig. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know you leave it you leave yeah. it all out there, man. Um, you know, it's not a boring class. Try not to make it all. We want to make it meaningful and, and have a large impact on people, not just in terms of their skill, but in terms of their sense of responsibility and, and not only what it means to prepare um, for the potentially having to uh, to use their firearm in self-defense. And that's really what it's all about.
Right, absolutely. So I know we've we've covered this before, but maybe we should just go over it real quick. What are the things that you recommend to people to bring when they're coming out there to do classes with you? Oh yeah, I mean you want your basic stuff, you know, your your protection gear, your need some lube for your firearms, you know, cleaning equipment, um, maybe a few magazines, you know, no, nothing crazy. I mean, if you want to bring a cooler, that always makes things a lot better. That always makes life a lot better. Like those are things when I go and take classes you know, that I bring, it just makes life easier. And you get a good, nice lunch and nice drinks like Gatorade, water, coconut water, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so just small things like that. You want to bring a spare gun. You know, a lot of times people will, will have to bring a spare gun because you never know what's going to happen. You know, your right. main gun may <laughs> I, I understand a lot of people can't afford that, you know, but uh, most certainly bring spare parts if that's the case, you know, because the instructors will probably be able to, to fix it if there's something crazy. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but you have a better chance yeah. if you actually bring parts. Right. Do you ever recommend that if someone, let's say uh, someone just got a gun or let's say it's a rifle class and they just bought the rifle. Do you recommend that they bring that rifle or do you say, look, make sure you've put this many rounds through it and you know what's going to happen? Um, you know, if, if they do bring it, you know, definitely bring a spare, as I said, so they can bring that rifle and try it out. I mean, what better venue to see if it works or not than you have a class where you're going to fire a good amount of rounds through it over a couple of days, two or four or six even, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, that could work, you know, it could most certainly work, but, um, if that's your only one and you don't have it, like you should definitely make sure that it works before you bring it. Cause I'd hate for people to invest all that money in the class and the hotel and ammo and come out there and then only have that rifle and like, oh man, cause then you're at the mercy of your classmates. Like, did they bring a spare gun? You know, do they have one that you can use? You know, something like yeah. that. You can't always Are they going to wind up not needing it? <laughs> yes, exactly. In the moment that they do, like your, your class is done, right? Or, you know, we may have a spare one or may not, but you know. Uh, always bring a spare one just in case. Yeah, and in a, in the case of um, in the case of even handguns and rifles, let's probably separate those two categories. In the case of handguns, are there handguns that you do not want people to bring to the class if you're doing a handgun class? Oh no, I mean I, I want people to bring what they're going to carry. You know, I want I want people to bring what they're confident in, so that we can get help them get more confidence with it. But uh, you know, you, I don't really care what kind of firearms that people bring to class. But you know, a lot of times people find out the hard way that maybe it's not the best choice that they chose to bring to class. And you know, we can tell you can tell somebody that till you're blue in the face, but until they actually come out and uh, ring it through the process, and the proof is in their performance or lack thereof, only then when people see that there's a glaring deficiency. So I, we don't really don't care, you know, what people bring uh, to class as far as using it. But, we, you know, there's a reason we recommend the guns that we do, Hank. You know, I mean, there's a reason why. It's not just, oh, I, you know, I carry this so everyone should carry it. No, no, no. There's, there's a reason why we recommend the guns that we do. And, and I recommend guns that I don't carry but that I've seen in class that work and continue to work. You know, and the rifles that work and continue to work. And mm -hmm. then you notice that there's always a trend. There's always certain brands that crap out on you. There's always brands that have problems, no matter how well maintained that they are. And that's why we don't really mention those brands. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the same thing when it comes to rifles, right? You're not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a restriction. Did anyone ever come to the, like a rifle class with, I don't know, like a muzzle loader is probably a little bit <laughs> ridiculous, maybe a bolt <laughs> action. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, there, yeah, actually we have had a student come to class with a bolt action for a, when we did our DM class, there's a dude that brought it. Um, he did fine with it. You know, hell for our regular rifle, for our regular for our rifleman one class, we had a student that brought an SKS because he lived in a city that that's all they were allowed to have. Like no magazines is very restrictive, you know, and that's oh, all. He yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, he, and how, you know, how did he do with that? Oh, he was killing it. I mean, he was, he, he's, he trained with us before his most quiet, unassuming guy, really cool dude, school teacher, low key, last guy in the world that you would think would have a firearm. And just a confident guy, competent guy, follows instructions, processes information, applies that information, real humble. And uh, he, he emailed me, he says, hey, Reed, I'd, I'd love to come take the class, you know, but I can't have an AR, an AK or something like that. You know, I live here. I'm not going to name, I'm not going to tell you where he is, but mm -hmm. you know, he, uh, he's very, he had, was very restricted in the firearm that he could use. So, you know, what am I supposed to do? You know, tell the guy, no, you can't come with a rifle that you have to defend your life with legally, right? Am I going to say mm -hmm. that? Of course not. I said, hell, bring it. We'll teach you how to dance with it. Yeah. So he brought an SKS, and you know what? He's he's doing reloads faster with the stripper clips, you know, shoving them straight down in there. He's doing that faster than people are changing mags, right? I mean, yeah. he's on. I mean, this yeah. guy is dialed in tight, uh, focused. He could clear his stoppages just as easily. And, you know, with an iron-sided SKS, he's whacking steel at 300 yards better than people with ACOGs. 
Yeah, and it's, AR it's amazing what people do like under those kinds of pressures. You know, like uh, something that would ha that would make us have a bad day, let's say in America, and then you go to India or someplace, <laughs> and yeah. that same like those people become way more resourceful having the lack of things. Like let's say when you go to Cuba where they don't have parts for right. vehicles, so they figure out how to make parts. Sure. You know, and if we go to the parts store and they don't have that part <laughs> and we have to wait a couple of days, it's like we throw a fit. Sure. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's all relative, man. I mean, and, and, you know, I've always thought that, um, you know, the guys that really dedicate themselves to the craft, I mean, you, you can't buy proficiency, man. Like people, people think you can buy proficiency. Oh, if I just get this, I'll be able to shoot well. If I'll get this, I'll be able to shoot well. And if I get this optic, I'll be able to shoot well. And I say, you know, hold on a second, man. You know, how do you know you need all that crap? You know, how do you know? Did somebody tell you that you needed that crap? You know, which person told you that? And, and I'm not gonna sell, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I don't have, a, you know, nice rifles or that I don't use optics. I do. But you know what I did before all that? I went out and shot with iron sights, and I was taught classically. You know, did all that stuff, and you got to get a good foundation. Like my proficiency isn't because I shoot a Daniel Defense rifle at an aim point. That that my proficiency doesn't come from that. Well, you can do it with iron sights as well. It just takes more time, more mental energy. Um, you still got to do it. So, you know, all this, this, I hope the culture, you know, I really hope the culture of, I need to buy all this stuff. I hope, I hope that goes away. You know, I hope that, I hope people see that it's, that it's foolishness and that it's just, uh, it's just snake oil in the 21st century as opposed to the 19th century. You know, I mean, there's nice things out there. Don't get me wrong. There's, mm -hmm. there's nice mm -hmm. things that'll help you. But, um, at the end of the day, if you're spending more money on your equipment than you are gaining your own proficiency through training and practice, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. out there, if you're spending more money on, oh, I got to get this $2,000 rifle and, you know, I've got to get this, you know, $1,000 optic and I got to shoot match grade ammunition. Like, like, look, like you got to be able to do it eventually. I mean, you think if somebody handed like any one of my cadre, a Smith and Wesson MMP 15 and Wolf Gold 55s, do you think that they would have a problem hitting somebody at 300 yards with that? Oh, no, I don't. I don't, you know, I don't. They you know, they should. Exactly. So it's, it's like, okay, you don't need all that stuff. So, and I'm not like hostile to people in innovation, but what I've got a big problem with is like people being told all this stuff all the time online. Oh, I've got to get this product or, or I can't come to a class. What? Like you should come to a class and then decide if you need that stuff. I, uh, this, this last class had a young lady, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice, smart, all that, just, just on it. And, uh, class and she didn't know what she needed so she had you know she didn't have a bunch of stuff on her rifle but she had a bunch of stuff on there that maybe she didn't need so she she ends up you know trying to turn her sight on the thing doesn't work you know so there's 200 okay. 300 dollars yeah. shot in the rear end um she takes it off runs iron sights for the rest of the class and it's out shooting at least 80 percent of the class with an iron sighted smith and wesson m p I mean, her pistol's just a, a subcompact nine millimeter. She's, you know, ringing ten ring bullseye. Yeah, I mean, you got to think. Like, I mean, this this stuff is uh, is kind of odd. You know, here she is out here with the basic bare bone stuff, making it happen. So, I mean, I'd rather see the people out there with limited gear, but more dedicated to training and practice, than people out there with a bunch of expensive stuff that take you know one class every couple of years and then call it good. Yeah. So it's all yeah. about dedication. It's all, what are you dedicated to? Are you dedicating to buying a bunch of gear or are you dedicating to actually going out and learning how to use it? And I think that there's a big paradigm shift and I'd like to see that shift, you know, away from, from the, uh, from the hardware to the software. Okay. Yeah. That makes okay. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I think know, I see that I, when I, I, I do that when I do that. Uh, are we getting a little uh, bit of feedback? Getting... I think we're getting some feedback on your, actually, no, not now. Okay. So, um, you know what? I do want to shout out everyone that was in the class that I took with you. I actually ran into, I believe it's Andy. Remember I said there was a younger couple there? Um, I think that was Andy and his wife, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, actually, I actually ran into him in Georgia at the um, IV8888 event. Cool. He was there and he was like, do you remember me? <laughs> and I good. did. Yeah, he's a good guy. I, th I believe he's... Um, I believe he's still in the army, right? He is. Yeah, absolutely. Good guy. And um, and then just to go back to where you were talking about how you have people all across the spectrum coming in your class. I think I remember in the class that there was there was an emergency room doctor. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, too. yeah, yeah. We we had a lot. We've had a lot of those. Had a lot of doctors, a lot of engineers, a lot of like 
traditional professions, right? Traditional professionals. And they're smart people, right? They're mm -hmm. very analytical, thoughtful people. So, you know, you really got to, I mean, they're, they're always going to want to know the why and the how, but the why more importantly than anything. And that's, um, that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you know what? Let's take a couple of questions from people out there. Um, so Serving Christ wants to know, um, I would like to ask, is there any good way to get to know the people in my local police department without being a creep? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. I mean, go go ask them if you can do a ride along with them. You know, go see what they go through on a daily basis. You know, do a ride along program. You know, a lot of times you just got to sign a waiver and then uh, go. Oh, so you could just request. Um, you don't have to have like special connections to do a ride along. Yeah, go see my buddy Clay Bravo Delta Brinkley down in DeKalb County, Georgia, and do a do a ride along with him. He'd love to. He'd love to show you what he goes through on a daily basis. He's officer of the year, by the way. So he'd be a good one to oh. go with. Oh, okay. Police officer, training officer, competent guy, good shooter, and a good friend. Okay. So okay. So this that's an actual dude that folks who are in Georgia that want to go. Mm -hmm. uh, do a ride along with you can go do so okay that's a good suggestion right go do a ride along most police departments allow you to do that I'll take it I've never been on a ride along so I have no clue right yeah uh, Chris B wants me to shout out on the range so shout out to on the range uh, let's see so Solace Richardson wants to know should we always keep our state reps on speed dial <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what they're there for. That's what you're paying their salary, you know. I mean they're yeah. like, here's the here's the thing, man. Like you gotta they are public servants. They are mm -hmm. elected public servants. Notice what the root word of that is, servant. They are there to serve you. They are there to represent and serve you. That is their goal. That is their entire point. That is the only reason their position exists is to is to vote according to the wishes of their con of their constituency, provided that it is within the framework of the Constitution. They are public servants. They are there to do exactly what you want them to do as long as it is within the confines of the Constitution. That is what they get paid to do. And yes, you should call them if something is bothering you. If you don't do it, who will? Yeah. Also, if you, know, if you live in a place like, uh, if you live in a small town, or in a situation where like smaller towns, I should probably say, and you have access to actually seeing those people, you should try to get into like face-to-face -face contact with them and let them know who you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't wait until something like what's going on right now with uh, gun control laws threatening to uh, to uh, go into effect here or, or, or folks out there trying to put in gun control laws. Don't wait until that happens to speak to those people. So that when something like this happens and you do communicate with them, they know who you are, right? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, we've got good ones up here in, in Tennessee where I'm at. We've got pretty good representatives at the state and federal level. Um, you know, the ones that I have have represented very nicely. Uh, no pun intended. That is my state senator's name is Frank Nicely. So <laughs> <laughs> fun is absolutely intended, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you got to think, I mean, these that's what they're there for. And if you don't know who your representatives are, you can find that information out very easily. I mean, this whole republic was was designed so that you could participate in it. A lot of people are afraid or nervous, you know, to participate in this cause, because they're unfamiliar with the process. But oftentimes it's as easy as writing a handwritten note or, or calling, you know, having a phone call to the office. You know, you'd be surprised. I mean, I can tell you probably about 90 plus percent of the issues that I've called in on, they voted that way, right? I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, and that's even at the federal level. So, I mean, and I know that there's some places out there where it's, you know, it seems hopeless. Like you have some representatives. I mean, if you live in Sheila Jackson Lee's district there in oh, Houston, goodness. you yeah. know, that's going to. Or if you're in New York City or something like yeah, that, yeah. but it's, you know, but you should still try to let them yeah. feel the heat. Yeah. Tell them. I mean, you know, at least at least put the effort in. I mean, then you will have a clear conscience, you know. Yeah. And also there's social media, too. You can always keep in touch with these guys on social media. Um, I even follow my local sheriff on social media. So I guess now I'm going to reach out to him and see if I can get a ride along now. You should. They'd, they'd yeah. be more than happy to, I would yeah. imagine. You know? and, yeah. and they're normally, they like that. I mean, that police, you know, a lot of them are public relations. You know, that's a big thing with most departments. And um, they would love to show you what they go through on a daily basis. I mean, if you've never done one before, it's a rewarding experience. Yeah, I've actually um, hung out with them while they were training, but I never did a ride along. Now I'm going to have to do that. Yeah, yeah, you'll get to see it. Some yeah. of them will keep you more entertained than the others as far as action goes. You know, you go right yeah. out there and play <laughs> at the cap. He's going he's gonna to keep your blood pressure up. 
Yeah, it sounds like that. <laughs> okay, so let's try to go through here and hit up some uh, more questions. So Mike Sykes wants to know if you have any thoughts on FN ARs. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quality. In fact, one of the best, AF, like when I was in boot camp and shop, mm -hmm. back in 1999, that shows my age, well, my beard shows my age, but back then, <laughs> um, that was actually, that was my boot camp AR, it was my M16A2, uh, was an FN, and it was very accurate, it's good, uh, military specification rifles, you know, they got the contract, it's good to go, I have no problem carrying one of those. Okay, cool, let me see, I gotta scroll back up here. Um... Yeah, so when it, are there other brands that you like? I mean, obviously everyone knows that you're a, like you like personally Daniel Defense, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're good quality. That's not the. I mean, look, that's not the only quality rifle. Right? That's one that I like. I've shot them, and then mm -hmm. they they tight and they shoot reliably. Man, you know, Colt makes a good one. FN, as we just said, makes a good one. Um, man, Arrow. If you're on a budget, Arrow Precision. You know, they make a good one. That's quality. It's gonna work. It's gonna last. You know, Smith & Wessons, I've been very impressed with Smith & Wessons coming through class. We've not had a single issue with Smith & Wesson, and they're not okay. that. They're like 550 maybe 550 600 bucks. My brother actually had never bought a gun before until a few months ago, and he asked, well, which one should I get? I said, well, you know, what kind of budget are you talking? He's got a wife and two kids, my nieces, mm -hmm. and um, he's on a budget, you know, just like everybody. I don't know anybody that has this um, – unlimited supply to money you know um yeah. it's it's like we're all on a budget so use your money wisely um yeah. so he got a smith and wesson mmp 15 and it's you know um they're they're good guns and if i have my brother my own brother you know buy one a smith and wesson mp they're gonna work i'm not gonna say just to save a buck so it's cheap and shoddy you know go get it now we want guns that work and those all the ones i mentioned will work yeah and there's lots of good deals out there right now so oh, right now the time to do it you know yeah, lots of good deals out there. Um, Chin Rot Chin says Roll Tide. <laughs> oh, that's for JJ probably. Yeah, and then someone, so, then Gerald Weldon says Go Dogs, which uh, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Um, okay, so Wicked Sensation says, Reed, you should do U.S. history classes and accept the GI Bill, and then he does a wink in there. <laughs> <laughs> I should do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, there may be an accreditation issue there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be interesting if you actually get set up where you could take the GI Bill. <laughs> well, if you take the GI Bill, it means you're going to have to deal with federal policy, and I don't think oh, I'm really well, going to Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's – okay, that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and then Larry W. says, nature is weed killing in northern Wisconsin right now. It's snowing out. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. It's got to be all that global warming. Yeah. <laughs> How's the weather where you are? I think, did I miss the cold? I hope I'm so. supposed to snow uh, two days from now in Tennessee in October. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's going to snow on Thursday morning. Okay, cool. Um, got to get my firewood under a roof. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, because you got because I know you like to keep your firewood well seasoned. Yeah, you got to or it won't burn. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? After I came back from there, um, we had like a burn pit on our property and Lola and I had to, you know, clean up the property. Actually, we had Mr. Guns and Gear come out and shoot with us, right? Awesome. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, he is a good guy, Mike. And so Lola's like, yeah, you got to you got to clean up this place. <laughs> so I was out there burning the stuff down and then she got kind of like upset with me because I, I thought I was an expert because I was out there burning stuff with you. <laughs> and she was, she was like, you think you're some kind of expert now because you, you sat around the fire with Reed one time? <laughs> it's so, okay. You get it. You get experience by doing and learning. Yeah. Well, bur you know what? Like, actually, you know, doing a fire, man, that is a primal thing. It's, it's, the, it's one of the most primal things there is. Yeah. Yeah. So that was actually, I found that to be enjoyable, although I didn't make a real fire pit yet. So I'm still, I'm still working on that. So um, NRA instructor wants to know, do you see increased interest in nine millimeter carbines? No. Are you, are you even interested in nine millimeter carbines? <laughs> like, let's start there. Are you I, interested well, in those? I mean, dude, if, you know, if that's, if that's all you can do, I mean, that's great. But I mean, for a gun for the exact same size, I can have five, five, six. Mm -hmm. okay. Five, five, six is more effective than nine millimeters at any distance. Yeah, so um, 
I don't know what this means, but Lion Lamb says any credibility to the NRA victory concerning the bump fire slash slide fire stock. I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't know what the victory is there. So um, anytime, freedom, even anytime freedom is diminished is no victory. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know that you did put out some videos on this whole thing that happened in Vegas. You know, do you want to make any comments on that here? Or do you feel like, you know, we've already exhausted that whole thing? And people are going to believe, with, you know, people are going to have the opinion that they have. They're going to, they are going to gravitate towards people that they believe espouses their beliefs. Um, some people are saying it's a grand big old chess game where somehow that the chess master NRA are going to trade one thing for the other. And that's their grand strategy. That's absolute naivety. That, that's the most naive statement that I believe that I've ever heard in my life. You know, for, for people to believe that if we just give up one minor thing that all of a sudden Democrats or, or whoever are going to be willing to trade national concealed carry for a piece of plastic. You know how absurd that seems? If they weren't willing to do national concealed carry without a piece of plastic, why would you do it with a piece of plastic? Yeah, that, I, can't, yeah I can't believe anyone that, that is sane actually believes that that's somehow playing 3D chess or some stroke of genius or brilliance or... Because yeah, I don't I, I don't know on what basis do they think these guys just want to ban the ban the slide fire stock. I don't get it. I mean, they want to ban everything. Well, yeah, I think Hank, we're at the point now where you know every time that people who are gun owners sit down at the table to have a so-called discussion or dialogue with people that want guns, anytime we sit down to the table, we lose. Every time we have sat down at the table with people that want to restrict firearms ownership in some way, shape, or form, whether it's an outright ban, or whether it's banning a slide fire stock. Anytime that we've done that and sat down at the table, we have ended up giving more and getting either nothing or less. Mm -hmm. So why would you continue sitting down at the table if every time you sit down, your entree gets ripped right out from underneath your face? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a waste of time. And also, I mean, I don't know. I keep saying this. What what do what do people think? Like what legislation do you think we could put in? What what inanimate object do you think that we could ban that would make the 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 victims or the families of the victims feel better about anything or stop this from ever happening again? Well, I mean, you know, that's not There isn't. It's, yeah. it's not it's not even the point. And you know this. I mean, people are going to be hardliners or whatever they deem as hardliners. I mean, I guess standing up for the Bill of Rights makes you a hardliner all of a sudden or an extremist or a radical or an unreasonable person. Well, in unreasonable times, you have to be an unreasonable person. And, you know, I'm at the point now where, I mean, I, I want friendship with all and alliances with all, but, you know, at the same time, if those friendships or those alliances, you know, make other people lose freedom, then I'm done talking and compromising with that. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to happen. You know, I, I run a training school, not a, you know, I don't sell anything. You know, I don't sell anything other than my knowledge. Right. And so the only stake that I have in this is understanding that this is just to get their foot in the door for further infractions on people's individual liberty. And I'm not for that. I'm not for that in any genre, whether it's the First Amendment or the Fourth Amendment or go on down the list of the Bill of Rights. I'm not for that. And any time that you're willing to compromise on that, that tells, if you compromise on little small things like that, you're probably going to compromise big time on, on later on down the road. And I think a lot of things, I think this has been given us a gift. I think this, the shooting is not a gift. The shooting's a tragedy, horrible event. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who else would think otherwise? Right. But the gift I'm talking about is that you get to see a lot of people's true colors. You get to see a lot of freedom, so-called freedom minded people show you who and what they really are. Yeah. And I think also, um, we, we fell into heavy complacency, right? Especially after the elections. Um, I think a lot of people think that because Republicans have a majority, because Trump's in the White House, then that's the end and nothing's gonna happen, you know, in terms of gun control. And I think that's a huge, huge mistake. And no matter what, even with all of this, there's still people that feel like there's no chance of gun control. And I think, I'm thinking this is like, it, the, from the last time we actually had gun control get signed in, this is the time right now when it's highly likely to happen because how many bills are there out there right now? I think it's something close to 20 or over that, right? Yeah, the, you know, the whole committee process, thank God for it, you know. Um, it's, it's just that's, that's the way government's set up. You know, the House is designed to rapidly get things passed, but the Senate is the cooling saucer. 
of legislation, according to our founders, right? They called the Senate the cooling saucer because uh, that's supposed to be more deliberation. There's much more deliberation in the Senate than in the House, and that's good. I love a slow-moving government. I want as slow of a moving government as possible because when you get these knee-jerk reactions, knee-jerk stupidity happens. And, yeah. um, you know, you look at this stuff, and I mean, I'm sure this has been spoken of and, and talked about to death, but, you know, my perspective on it is that, you know, uh, if I'd have told you a year or two years ago that that you know certain organizations would say we should we should uh, you know we should give this up or we should do this, that would have been like what? Yeah, to think to think that an organization that's pro gun would actually repeatedly come out and say that they are against people modifying their rifles in any way. So you know, you know or, or specifically the rate of fire even of their rifles, that would be like well, what the hell are you talking about? Well, I mean, you know, really, I would like to, to have, if they, if they wanted the ATF to, to redo their ruling on the slide fire, I really would ask them to do the ATF to do a re-ruling on the National Firearms Act of 1934, you know, which arbitrarily uh, made registration of firearms the first time in American history. You know, if you want to talk about natural rights, okay, when you want to talk about that and what natural rights truly are, I don't know if some of the people watching this are familiar with natural rights. Some probably are. Some are not. Natural rights are rights endowed by your creator, all right? So your creator is the one that, that gave human beings rights from birth. And this is in our founding document. This is in the Declaration of Independence. So if you disagree with what I'm saying, then you, you disagree with John Locke and Thomas Jefferson and really the entire foundation of our country. And that's okay. You know, you can disagree all you want to, but um, natural rights are given to us by the creator. And, you know, the more that and this is also our founders wrote down and then spoke very clearly about this that if that was our focus if the creator was our focus if our if what we how we lived our life and that was our focus that we would prosper and if not then it would be taken away and whether it's all at once or piece by piece by piece by piece and you know you're starting to see that happen now because what what are where a lot of people get lost in the weeds is that they'll say oh it's just the ATF regulating this oh if congress passes a law they don't have authority to infringe on your natural right. Like that's what people don't understand. They don't have the authority. It would be like me going into somebody else's house and saying, you have to do this now. Well, wait a minute. You're not the house owner. You're just some dude that walked into the house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, it, they don't have that authority, but you can abdicate that authority to them. Sure. You could, if you willingly give it up, sure. But you know, I don't know of anybody, I don't know of any gun owner that, that willingly says now all of a sudden that I have to go register a gun. But were you consulted about that? I wasn't consulted about that. Nobody was consulted about that. And um, it's, this, it's this weird thing where people are just willing to, to give away things. I don't think people realize how hard that our ancestors fought on battlefields for this. I don't, I don't think they truly understand what it was like to be at Valley Forge or what it was like to be after the after the battle of, of Saratoga or what it was like to be at Trenton or what it was like to be at Princeton or what it was like to be at any of the other campaigns in the world. I don't think they understood how hard fought that these freedoms were, you know, with just the flick of a pin, someone can say you don't have access to this anymore. I don't think that they understood. The British had to march out and earn it. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden people just flick it with a pen and almost be, oh, that's okay. I, I don't need that. I don't shoot that. That's okay. Yeah. Very well, I, I think very that those folks. Attitude towards freedom. Very yeah, I think those folks didn't want to be ruled, right? Mm -hmm. Overwhelmingly, they did not want to be ruled. I think the weird thing is a lot of us nowadays, a lot of people, not me, but I think there, I see so many people that just want to be ruled by someone. It's a very insidious thing, man. Um, you know, the, the, it's a very insidious thing, and, you know, people need to remember about the American Revolution is that it wasn't like one half of the country against the other half. That, that's not what it was. It was it was pockets here and there that, that literally hated each other. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, in one town, you could have uh, patriots and Tories living right next to each other, and depending on which army was in the town, you know, there would be, there would be informants, there would be arrests, there would be hangings. You know, there would be pilfering of property. You know, there'd be the, there was a visceral hatred in many communities from one neighbor to the other. And uh, it wasn't geographical like the war between the states was. It, it was not this geographical thing. It was in, in certain communities. People just distrusted and disliked each other. One side believed that our freedoms came from the creator. The other side believed that our freedoms were granted to us by the crown. Mm -hmm. And I think we still see that mentality today. Yeah.
I think it's just uh, programmed in some people. So in regards to all these bills that are out there, like the SHARE Act and the uh, HPA uh, Shush Act and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, what, what do you think? Uh, I, I see everything right now has been taken off the table, right? So pro-gun stuff has been taken off the table. Um, Anti-gun stuff has been taken off the table. What, what do you think uh, we have to look forward here? Man, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I thought that, you know, maybe the first part of this year, there would have been a lot of good things happening, but it turns out that, you know, instead of moving forward, you know, and, and actually implementing the agenda that a large, large percentage of Americans wanted, it's almost like they were planning to lose. And so now they don't have a plan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I don't know. I'm frustrated. I'm sure a lot of people out there are frustrated by this, but what do I see happening? I think that the 2018 elections will be very, you know, very, be very important, but I guess every election is important, but um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to get done. I think in, I think in DC, you've got a bunch of people that, that uh, are very comfortable. They've been there for a very long time. Um, they could care, you know, less about a lot of people, and to them, it is a career. Mm -hmm. Making money is a career rather than serving the public, and that's that's a big sham. I'd I'd love to see, um, you know, true servant leadership like we've had in the past, but I guess uh, I guess that's a pretty pretty long far dream. Yeah, because I think our chances of getting things like term limits and all that are, <laughs> are impossible. You know, I Very I think yeah, I don't know if there's anything that you know, we can do to, to push that forward. But I think that's one of the biggest things that we're dealing with, that folks go in there and no matter what they say their intentions are when they get in there, once they get, they're in and they're comfortable and they think, yeah, I could live like this for the rest of my life, then it's impo it's almost impossible to get them out. Yeah, it's, uh, and unfortunately, you know, that's happening more and more, but yeah, you never know, man. Um, it, the thing about history is that it often turns very quickly. People think it happens slow and gradually, but I found it to be the opposite. I found it to be that things pivot very quickly. Yeah. If we get worked up enough about it, if we've really had enough of it and we keep pushing, you know, we may be able to get some of these things. Uh, let me go back to some questions here. Um, Rock Humper wants to know how, how long in advance does he need to sign up for the uh, intro to rifle class? Oh, rifleman one class? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we've already got March sold out for next year. So, I mean, usually, I mean, usually the vast majority of our schedule is sold out by, by late March, early April, like for the net, for the, for that year. So like March, of, so like normally by March 18, the, the pickings are very slim. So earlier rather than later, but would be a good recommendation. Yeah. Robert Knox wants to know if you have any recommendations for Glock sites, because he, he doesn't like the factory ones. Yeah, I mean, any of the steel ones, like, you know, Trigicon HDs are good. Uh, Warren Tactical ones are good. I mean, any any good set of steel sights, you know, you just have to try out a few and see what your eye likes. I mean, I can tell you what my eye likes, but that's not going to be the same for everybody. I've got good eyesight. Thank God. Okay. Do you automatically change the uh, the sights on the on the Glock? That's the first. That's the only thing I do. Oh, okay. Um, on the Glock, you know, the, the, the sights that come from the factory are plastic, although some models come with night sights from the factory, like the Trigicon, the law enforcement ones do too as well. Uh, but you're going to want to change those plastic sights out because if you're doing one-handed work, you can rip the sights off very easily. And in fact, I've seen it happen multiple times in class. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I was wondering why because I've never, I've never changed mine. Yeah. Yeah, it's so. a real – they're not durable like the steel. The steel sights aren't going to rip off. Okay, so if you if you wind up losing uh, the ability to use one arm, and then you have to do crazy stuff like uh, rack it with your with your belt or your shoe or something like that, you've seen people actually just rem like remove those sights and things like that when they leave in the plastic ones. Oh yeah, they'll they'll push down and rack it off, and the sight the sight comes spinning off. I'm like, all right, man, you're gonna have to use just your front sight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for for a while, but not too far out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, that's good. And uh, let me see. I'm going on here to see what else. Um, okay, let's see. So Just Dano says he's uh, taken a fighting pistol class and he's looking for a more solid training. What can he expect in your class and how do the classes compare? I don't know if you want to. I don't know. I mean, our, our students would probably have to tell you that. But I mean, you know, our what we emphasize in our class, I can tell you what we do. Right. I can tell you what we do at Valor Ridge is uh, we emphasize marksmanship and accountability 
for those rounds because every round that you shoot in concealed carrier and home defense matters. And so we emphasize solid, fundamentally, fundamentally sound gun handling um, that has actually been used by our cadre in real world situations. Mm -hmm. And um, in addition to that, we emphasize marksmanship to a very heavy degree. You know, any of our students will tell you that uh, that accuracy is, is king with us. We really, really strike that home. And by the end of the class, people really hate misses. I mean, they hate missing. And I'm like, good, that, that's the culture that we're going for. You should learn to right. hate. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, okay, this is a question I've been getting a lot uh, over the last uh, few weeks. And then pretty much every day now, someone's asking me about this. What are your thoughts on the November 4th Antifa gathering or whatever is supposed to go down? Well, I don't know uh, if you've heard about any of this. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the only thing that I know for sure is that it won't affect the unemployment statistics. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there you go. You got that. You got that answer. Um, James W. Moody, the patron of Philadelphia. That's the name here. What do you gentlemen think of urban use militia carrying the CMR 30 versus the AR 15? Uh, the CMR 30 is a uh, 22 Magnum versus the AR 15 chambered in 556 for standard issue. Keyword here is militia. Man, you use whatever you want as yeah. long as you can as yeah. long as you can use it effectively and legally, you know? Yeah. Are you familiar with the CMR thirty? I've heard about it, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um no no opinion on that, right? You probably have never shot it or anything. You did. Yeah. <laughs> All if good. You, yeah, listen, if that's what you have and um, you know, you've put it through its paces and that works for you, then the, I, you know, as Reed says, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as it works for you. Right. That's it. As long as you can make it work, man. Like that. That's what it's all about. Yeah. So if it, other than someone coming to a class to do training, if they have some kind of carbine or something like that and they want to know if it can go through the paces, is there some some kind of regiment that you could suggest, like, say, we'll do this to it. And if you do this, you'll know whether or not. I mean, the truth of the matter is that the guns that they're making anymore, as long as it's a good, reliable brand and, you know, some. Oh, at this point, we've got enough information to know what which brands have a good reputation and which ones don't, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like with AKs, you know, if you, if you talk about that, there there's like, you know, Rifle Dynamics is going to work. You know, Krebs Customs is going to work. You know, the arsenals are going to work. If it's one of those, it's going to work because they very rarely have problems. You know, I mean, those are the ones that we see that just come through there and work. But they are the same ones. I mentioned a bunch of ARs earlier. You know, your Daniel Defense, Colt, FN. Uh, Smith and Wesson, Aero Precision, all those guns work. I mean, they're designed by people that design guns for a living. They build guns for a living, and as long as you keep it clean and lubricated, it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But if you come with it dry, or you come with it, you know, dirty and uh, and all that, it's probably not going to work very well. But if you keep it clean and lubricated, it's going to work. Especially AKs. You know, people think oh, I don't need to clean or lubricate this. It's an AK. Well, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. You do need to clean and lubricate it. It's a machine. You wouldn't run your car without having it having motor oil in it, would you? So, um, you know, that's it. I mean, as long as you keep it clean and ready, it's it's going to work probably. Unless you've done something aftermarket to it, you know, unless you've sent it to a gunsmith or unless you've dremeled some parts off, or if you have altered the design of the firearm from the factory, it probably will not work. Mm -hmm. So, um, th so do you have any kind of regiment that, like, let's say you got a rifle and you wanted to know, you know, whether that rifle was fit or not for your use? Is there something that you would do with it? Well, my use is is home defense, you know, and uh, you know, if I have to use it to secure my neighborhood or my farm, or you know, that's what I'm using it for. So, I mean, really. You're gonna you're you're only going to use it for a handful of reasons. I mean, when it comes to self defense, I'm not even gonna speak about hunting or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're only gonna use it either to defend your home, mm -hmm. um, to get home, or if you know neighborhoods are under siege like they have been in Ferguson and uh, you know Houston with the looting. Like that's really what you're gonna be using it for. Like okay. ninety nine percent sure. You know. Yeah. So if someone like what I'm trying to get from you is if someone if someone has that intent, that purpose for it and they buy a rifle, but they don't know. Right. Let's say they just even they bought an AR 
a no name or whatever it is, or they built one themselves, they built their own gun. What should they do? Should they, you know, put 500 rounds through it, put a thousand, should they do this thing or that thing with it and see how, you know, or is it, is it just too difficult to, uh, to really know unless you put it under some kind of pressure? You're going to want to heat it up. I mean, warm and I mean like you know two three four mags like in succession pretty quickly you know you should get definitely get it I mean you know in our classes I mean we shoot but we don't abuse the guns you know we don't you know we don't have people abuse the guns we're not putting like five six seven mag dumps I mean that you know that's not what we do yeah no not at all you know, but, it's, still, it's like, but I still think the guns are under a different kind of pressure and, and you could sure. tell some things you know sure you get them warm you know you want to get them warm and that means a couple of mag at least two three four mags you know, and not one right after the other, but I mean, pretty heavy volume of fire if you're doing this. Like, you know, if we're doing drills and it's like seven to 10 rounds, go ahead and fire. And, you know, then you do your thing and then we do that again and then we do that again and then we do that again. You know, you do three or four mags in the gun in about, you know, a three or four minute stretch and it's it's going to heat it up a pretty good amount. The barrel will be very hot. The belt carrier group will be pretty hot. You know, all that stuff will get warmed up. So that's a, usually a pretty good one. People that say, oh, my gun's been reliable for years and it's clean and lube and I've never had a problem with it. And then they take it through our class and then it's, it's having problems. You know, it just yeah. won't extract a cartridge or it uh, won't feed or, you know, whatever issue that it could be, it happens. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think the reason for that and it's the reason why I'm asking you the question in a few different ways you know, is that I, I think that I've observed that there's a lot of people, whether they buy a cheap rifle or they buy an expensive rifle, that in the lifetime between them buying that rifle and then maybe taking it back to the store and selling it and trading it and getting something else, they have not put even 100 rounds through that thing. A lot of times it's somewhere between 20 and 50 rounds. Sure. Very minimal firing schedule. Yeah, yeah, they go down to the range or something and maybe they put a box. Some people go there and put like five rounds through. They're like, oh, this thing's good. Sure. Well, we don't know until we know. I mean, and that and that's the deal. And, and I'd rather, you know, I'd much rather have it be in a, in a safe training environment than as opposed to when you really count on it and it doesn't work. And we've had a lot of people that have come through that found out that, you know, this gun was supposed to be really good, but it's not good. And I was like, well, I'm glad you found out here. So, you know, go ahead and get one of the brands that we talked about and, and you're going to be fine. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me. Okay, so there's a couple of questions here. Do you have any recommendations for a good uh, BCG? Man, whatever comes with the rifle from the factory, man. Yeah, you're good with that, yeah. huh? You're good with yeah. yeah. The stand. Does it have to be specially coated? Because I know oh. I complain. I complain about this. I'm gonna confess to you. Like I like you know I like mine with special coatings. No man, like yeah. the, the tall carpenter 158 steel. Just leave it be. All right, leave it. That's be. good carpenter. enough. Oh yeah. If it's not, I guess I've been fooled. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, and then um, the Tyvin show, the Tyvin show, he's always uh, watching uh, our podcast here. He wants to know what's the biggest caliber that you allow during training at your place. So can I come up there with a 50? <laughs> I don't know what class we'd use a 50 cal with. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. Like, I mean, like you, you really, I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, no, that was my question. I, he wanted oh. to know what's the biggest caliber. <laughs> I'm, you know, I mean, you know, if you want to, if you want to shoot, I mean, I, man, if you if you stick with one of the regular ones, five five six, seven six two by thirty nine, three oh eight, thirty out six, you know, those, those are fine. Any, anything bigger than that, I mean, you're just. Yeah. I mean, I think you have limitations, right? Because people, uh, there is a lot of sh like with the rifle classes, you're shooting at steel. Yeah. And you probably don't want someone coming up there and shooting your steel with fifty. No, no, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, but that's a real baller, man. By the way, <laughs> because how many? So in a in a typical rifle class, how many rounds is someone? Uh, like, what is it? Like a thousand rounds? Like eight hundred to a thousand, generally, depending on yeah. you know the shooter. Yeah. So think about that. Do you even really like? I don't know if I. You know, I think you're. I think you're good with five five six. <laughs> yeah. Any any of the main yeah. ones, you know. That, yeah. you know the top three in the world today for sure yeah five, but you know five. do you want to bring a thousand rounds reed's not going to let you shoot it but you do you want to bring a thousand rounds of like even a specialty cartridge up there you know yeah man the thing about all that stuff is that 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 too that's generally a the self-correcting problem you know because it just doesn't make it through the first morning mm -hmm. 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, Joe Cantor says he was in the uh, he was in this class and the neighborhood defense class, and they were both great classes. Okay, cool. So, uh, so there you go. So that's someone that was um, watching because you just had this class a couple days ago, right? Yeah, just uh, we ended up. I think we we ended up. Yeah, yeah, just a couple of days ago we ended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And um, I don't know if you want to answer this. It's up to you. Uh, Nathan Lopez wants to know if you can rattle off what's in your gun collection. Yeah, man. I mean, AR-15s, AK, and and Glock pistols, and that's it. <laughs> I don't have any. Like, I don't know what secret yeah. weapon. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, like yeah. I don't have anything crazy. I just I just have you know normal stuff that's not going to annihilate my shoulder every time. You know, a lot of times, oh, you want to shoot this 570 Tyrannosaurus? Nope, oh, you don't. Yeah. You go ahead and keep that one. You know, I, I'm going to shoot 5.56, five, 5.45, six, five, five, 7.62 by 39, 308, and that's about as bold as I get. Yeah, do you have a massive gun collection? No. No, no, I do yeah. not have a massive gun yeah. collection at all. Yeah, I could tell you that if people ask me, like, how many guns I have, I usually look at that person, and I think, what would this person think is a ridiculous number? And then that's what I tell them. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, I don't know. You don't think like you know you must be an environment instructor. You must have a bazillion guns, but that that's not that's not the case. I'd I'd rather uh, you know I'd rather just you know have just a, a couple of firearms like in each caliber and really learn how to use them well than have a lot. You know, and I don't, we're just big proponents of leaving the guns alone. You know, like leave yeah. you know, one, one, leave them alone from the factor. If you want to put an optic on there, that's great. You should always have iron sights on your rifle, but yeah. but other than that, man, just just leave leave it be. And then correct me, correct me if I'm wrong here. I think that you spend a lot of money on the rain, on the facility itself, right? On Valor Ridge itself. That's where you yeah. put a lot of your money towards. Oh, I would say the overwhelming, like, yeah, huge, a huge percentage is we, yeah. we spend on upkeep but there, as far as making it better. Because what it's about is that every everything that we can do makes the student experience better, like with, whether it's with, uh, you know, whether it's with the shooting, with the actual gravel itself, whether it's, you know, adding sound baffles on the site, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, we try to make it a better experience for, for people. Every, every time somebody comes back, they're always like, wow, man, a lot better than when, you know, we were here before. It looks good. I was like, yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I think we're about 99% there. I think we're, we're just about got it licked. Okay, cool. Um, and so this is, uh, I don't know if this is not really a question, but Rob Graham says he would, uh, I wish I could afford coming to Valor Ridge for training, the, the classes aren't expensive. Do you want to just go through some of the prices or like, sure. you know? Yeah, I mean, we do two, four and six day classes, you know, uh, depending on what you want to do. Um, right now, uh, well, for 2018, where it's going to be for a two day class, uh, 595, go to our website on, on ValorRidge.com and, and it's, they're all right there, which ones you can do, but, but ballpark for a two day, you're going to spend 595. You know, for a two day or for a four day, you know, I think it's maybe eleven something, and then for a four a six day, you know, which is generally either six days of rifle or you know we do a, a pistol rifle and a medical uh, class with Patriot Nurse. She does the medical portion of our classes because she knows what she's doing with that. In fact, she's going to be training for about the next month. You know, re, re, re uh, getting her certification up and all that because and taking other classes with uh, about trauma, life saving things like that. But um, yeah, we, we do two, four, and six day classes. All that's on ValorRidge.com, and um, if you go there, it'll it'll tell you everything you need to know. Even when the classes are next year, we have our schedule out a year in advance uh, many times because we know people need to plan. So it's yeah. all up there, and it's been up there since June or July. Okay. Yeah, I think you know um, that's definitely the price of let's say a, a handgun nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, if you have to save up for it, I say save up for it. It's well worth it. So that, that's what I would say to that. Um, Tyvin is also asking uh, about, uh, you know, bringing young people up there. And he wants to know what's like how young, you know, he's interested in bringing his grandson. So what's the sure. youngest age? I think you've talked about this before. Uh, the youngest one I think we've had so far is 13 or 14. Um, it, it would be, of course, who knows their kids and grandkids better than the guardian, you know? So we don't, we don't know. I mean, so not all children are equal, right? Like, you know, some, some 11, 12 year olds are really smart, squared away people. And some of them, you know, need extra guidance. So, mm -hmm. you know, your, your kids or your grandkids much better than we do. 
but uh, they do need to be able to follow instructions. They do need to be able to process what's going on. And more important than that, like you've got to take the class with them. So if you're going to sign a student up, you've got, if you're under the age of 18, you've got to have a guardian with you. And that's, that's just common. I mean, that's just, that's the right thing to do as a student, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm going to do a few more of these and then we're just going to go back to our regular conversation just so that, you know, uh, Tango Hunter says he knows that you prefer longer barrels with heavier grains such as 69 and 77 OTMs uh, becoming more popular. Do you still prefer your 18 and 20 inch barrels? Obviously uh, longer for M193. So. Um, no, I mean, it's it's all good. I mean, yeah, 18 inch barrels good. I mean, 16 is good too though. I mean, you know, especially if you're pushing heavier ammo through there, you know. Um, but yeah, I think it's fine. 16 to 18 inches is good. 20 if you're in a much more rural environment, that would work as well. But they're all good. You know, pick the rifle you shoot the best, and, and that's the most accurate for you and the most reliable would be my opinion. I mean, there's some 16-inch rifles that are absolute tack drivers, you know. I mean, there's ones that can shoot out there pretty far. They're, they're accurate. They're, they're good to go. So I, I think it's, it's the barrel length is less important than, than how accurate the gun and how, more importantly than that, how well you shoot it. Yeah. Okay. And I think you did a video on this one, but we'll maybe we'll try to condense it down here and, and get a quick take on it. If you have a brand new AR, what should you do before the first shot? Yeah, you're gonna want to say you <laughs> clean and lubricate it, you know, just slide a bore snake down there just to get all that oil or whatever the machining fluid is that they have in there. So punch that bore, you know, wipe everything down with hoppies or whatever gun cleaning stuff that you use. You know, clean it down, wipe it down, and then put some good lubrication in there and uh, your rifle will be ready to fire. So, you know, that's really what it's all about. So you just don't want to take it right out of the box and go shoot it. You know, I'm sure you could, oh, but um, uh, I prefer to get all that stuff out. I'm guilty of doing this all the time, man. It's okay. You're not going to hurt it. It's just, you know, it's just uh, like I want mine clean and lubed and ready to go. Yeah, I do it a lot of times. I mean, people send me stuff and, and I'm shooting it for like, you know, this, this is what I do. So a lot of times I'll just take them and, and shoot them first. And then if I run into problems, I'm like, oh, maybe I should clean this thing. Sure. And then I'll go try to do that. I'll clean it, lubricate it, see if that, you know. But yes, it's probably good advice to just clean it and lube it. It doesn't take long. If you're doing, if it takes you longer than 10 minutes to clean and lubricate your gun, you're just, you're taking too much time, you know, just, just wipe it down or knock it down with the solvent, clean it off, punch the bore a few times if that's what your thing is. And, um, you know, just put some lube on there. Whatever it is, whatever lube you use, make sure it works. You know, you can't go wrong with with uh, old standard, you know, CLP. You can't go wrong with, you know, Slip 2000. You can't go wrong with motor oil. You know, as long as it provides lubrication, you know, you just, just make sure it's there because right. they don't like being run dry. Okay. So now I'm just I'm just gonna uh, change gears here a little bit and just uh, talk about whatever we want to, and then obviously I'll keep checking on the comments and questions that folks have and see if we can come back. So what's going on? Are you going into a hiatus at some point? I know it's getting colder. Do you uh, like suspend classes on the ridge for a certain period of time? Well, we will generally uh, not have classes in January and February, right? Because the snowing in the mountains is unpredictable. We would hate to have a class scheduled and then, you know, have people get snowed in or, you know, have it be a blizzard or something and then not. Getting down the driveway isn't the problem. <laughs> Getting back up the driveway is the problem, as you know, right? <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Yeah. Um, even in a, even like, I don't know. Well, that wasn't the summer that I came. But, no. yeah, you need to obey the speed limits. When no. You're, no, yeah, it's it's okay. a nice drive. Uh, yeah, huh? I try to keep it. We try to keep it nice. You know, I got the box blade on the tractor. I'll level it out every couple of months, you know, yeah. make sure it's good. But, uh, yeah, we shut down in January and February because not only just because of the weather, but, you know, we've got stuff to do out there as well. You know, it's, uh, you know, with as much property as there is, it takes a lot to manage it and it takes a lot to do that. Plus, you know, I like to use that opportunity for, for my own personal growth as far as, you know, knowledge and as far as maybe getting able to go do some training on my own. Okay. Um, to read some books, be able to write some books, you know, things like like that. Okay, because that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what kind of stuff do you get into in your downtime? So now you're saying writing books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so, gonna be writing. I'm writing one right now. You know about. Oh, really? Yeah, about pistol pistol craft. Um, want to do that? Like, what my reflections are, my perspective are on, on the pistol being used. Uh, you know, it's it just. You know, it's in the works. You know, I've, I've already started the first. I've already got my outline ironed out and a couple of 
couple of sections. So it's coming along. Okay, so how soon can we expect this book? <laughs> An unknown timeline. <laughs> An unknown timeline. I, well, you know, okay, you know we're gonna ask, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, it's just there. It's good. It's important. You know, I I enjoy you know writing the book too, but you know, I, I like refreshing up on my history as well. I'd be reading you know a lot of history, and you know, I like to be able to read. Man, I like to be able to to you know really get back into that when I've got time. You know, read a lot of Torah. You know, really refresh up on that and, and get good. And really, because that's the full foundation for for who I am, what I'm trying to be about. You know, that's it's important. Yeah. So, do you ever, you know, talk about your religion and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. not in depth. I mean, it's it's not okay. like an thing. I just, you know, I'll tell people. You know, I mean, I definitely am tour observant. You know, I try. Um, that's why next year there's no classes on Saturday. Some people may wonder how come you don't have classes on Saturday. That's the Sabbath. Um, so I'm not going to be teaching on the Sabbath next year. I'm going to be teaching every other day, but the Sabbath, that, that's the day that we're not supposed to. So, um, yeah, I don't really get into all the depth about it. I mean, if students want to ask and, you know, they want to ask privately, that's fine. It's just, um, you know, it's an important part. It's an important part of who I am. And, um, you know, it's really the main, I mean, people wonder how, how come Valorant is so successful? You know, you guys must really have the perfect formula. I mean, you're real smart. You got a good cadre, good classes. Well, the reason we're so successful is because, you know, we've been blessed. You know, we've been given a lot of gifts uh, from God. I'm very thankful for that. Um, mm -hmm. People open this. People open up schools all the time. And, and a lot of them are very good. You know, there's a lot of skilled individuals out there with much better experience than I have. You know, much better uh, real world experience, you know, um, did cooler stuff. And they're good guys. But, you know, we've we've been blessed with. Uh, We've been blessed with with a great business, and really, we dedicated it to them. You know, we dedicated it to them the first thing, and I think that's a, a large portion of it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're not and in class. You know, in the purpose, you know, we talk about purpose. We get into that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, do you feel like your your um, religious beliefs are like your own personal journey? You know, a road that you have to travel down, kind of a thing. Yeah, absolutely. But sometimes, you know, sometimes we get yanked down out of the clouds by them. You know, sometimes we, you know, we think we're going one direction and then all of a sudden it's like, nope, stop. Here's what I want for you now. Mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing. You know, it's amazing that sometimes some of the worst things that happen to you end up being some of the best things. I mean, you look back on it in retrospect. Absolutely. At the time, we want what we want, right? At the time, we want what we want. We want, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want, and then all of a sudden it's a reality check and you know that's not going to happen. So. And oftentimes when you look back on it, you're like, man, thank you. Thank you for for helping me out on that. So Yeah. And and even sometimes you get those things that you want and you, you also come to realize, like, yeah, you know, I don't know why I wanted this. <laughs> right. I, boy, I, I'm glad I didn't get my way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, um sometimes I think that's the fire that we all go through that makes our metal. Sure. You know, those kinds of challenges. So um so okay, so now, yeah. Now, by the way, you don't know this because you weren't, you obviously weren't here yesterday. But everyone's putting instead of saying barrel, they're putting burl. Oh, okay. Because because I had one of the one of the guys that's on the show with me. He's from from St. Louis area, and instead of barrel, he says burl. Yeah. So everyone's asking me barrel questions and putting burl, including Lola. So she's writing this question and putting burl on there, and then my brain has to work. So if you see steam coming out of my ears right now, because I'm trying, I'm trying to translate it for you. Um, do, so the, I guess the question here is: Do you consider barrel length or burrow length when it comes to accuracy? <laughs> do I consider it? Yeah, like the yeah barrel length is that important when it comes to accuracy? No, it's it, it, barrel length has very it, it, it barrel length is not really related to accuracy. It's really the velocity, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I've shot 14 and a half inch barrels that are much more accurate than an 18 or a 20. It's just they're not moving as fast. So, barrel mm -hmm. length has more to do with velocity than it does with with overall accuracy of the rifle. Okay, so there you go. For you know, and now stop with the barrel na nonsense. <laughs> you know, it's just yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. No, you know, sometimes like a joke is funny the first day. And then the second day is just not funny anymore. <laughs> yeah, at least you know, at least Lola's helping you out. She's doing her thing, you know. And we, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's good that y'all can share this together, man. I'm really happy yeah. about that. Right, and you know how that is. I mean, you know, Rachel helps you out, you know. 
Yeah, she more than helps me out. I mean, if it wasn't for her, you know, yeah. I don't know how I would be organized, and I yeah. don't know how. Like, because all you, I would, you wouldn't be on this on this podcast no, right I now, dude. Sign on. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know how to sign on to the Google Hangouts. I'm yeah. not a technologically savvy guy. Okay, like it just. Yeah. No one saw know. this, but Rachel set all of this up, and then she left. I was hoping yeah. she would like stick around or whatever, you know. Well, we're we're actually making chili tonight. We're gonna we're going to do chili and then we're gonna watch the uh, two hundred five live with WWE. So yeah, uh, so so you're a wrestling dude, man. I'm, I love I, it. I'm, love I'm it. actually surprised by that. Now I know in this class you were talking about this, and I was like, what the hell? Reed's a wrestling guy. Yeah. How did this oh, happen? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's like you can't focus on uh, you can't focus on you know reality twenty four seven, and I think. Look, man, you're not going to find too many guys that have a passion for freedom. Like, I mean, I'm a lot of people do, right? A lot of people, and they're good. But I live and breathe this stuff. But after you can't burn it 24-7, you know. I mean, you've got to have an outlet of some type. You know, you've got to have this thing that really helps you release the pressure. And what I what I like uh, what I like about a lot of the wrestlers is that they are truly patriotic athletes. You know, it, like they had to work hard to get there. And, you know, they're they're doing their thing and. It's just, you know, they do a lot of good stuff for kids and that, too. And, uh, you know, they do it without a chip on their shoulder. If they're playing a character, they're playing a character, right? Yeah, so, okay, that's – that. well, that was going to be my first question, but I didn't want to start a fight because uh, when I first came to America in the 80s, I would always get into fights with guys because I would say, like, you guys know this wrestling thing is fake, right? right. So, okay, so you do know that. <laughs> Let's start I there. I, I figured that one out when I was younger, huh? Uh huh. Okay. So, <laughs> so what is it about what is it about wrestling that you like? And and so and how long have you been into wrestling, man? How far back does this go? I mean, I was in high. I mean, I used to flip on and on like the Monday Night Raw wars. You know, I would go Raw, Nitro, Raw, Nitro, Raw, Nitro. I'd just be flipping back. You know, everybody. Wow. <laughs> this is when it was huge. You know, back in the mid late nineties. And I remember um, everybody at school talking about it. You know, we do the wrestling moves in the locker. You know, I had a real, I had a buddy I knew in high school named uh, Duran, a uh, really cool guy, man. Uh, he's a, fun, a friend of mine, and I'd always give him the people's elbow in the middle of the, you know, the rock. You know, he'd do the people's elbow, and then I'd drop the elbow on him in the middle of the hallway. And, and people knew to clear out when the two of us saw each other. I mean, this is in the oh, middle of changing yeah. classes, so, so people would go and. And they would uh, they would move out of the way, and I'd give them the people's elbow right in between classes, you know, uh, <laughs> you know through the cigarette smoke right in the hallways, right. That's you know going through high school. But I got a program here. Uh, this is oh, this is time. real. Oh, this is yeah, real. This, yeah, this is <laughs> this is like from a long time ago. I think this is from like the early '90s. But Bret Hart is my favorite wrestler. Like I love oh. Bret Hart, man. Um, but he's, yeah. he's no longer throw that up closer to the screen. Yeah, Bret Hart. Good? No, up a little higher. There you go. Oh wow. Okay. And he's got the million dollar man on the back. I know people. Wow, are that's old school. Man. I was there. I was at the Peoria Civic Center, and, and I got the program. My dad. Oh, you were at this match, okay? Yes, yes. And I was in high school when I to, when I was in high school. I went to uh to Monday Night Raw, right? When I was we would all just started driving. You know, it was a big deal uh -huh. to go to the school night. You know, Monday night, man, right after football. <laughs> you know, you are, we, you are deep into this, dude. Yeah, oh, this is cool. Man. Was cool. This is interesting to me. Right. We got the seats. We got the right seats. I went there with a couple of buddies of mine, and we were at the ramp, right, when all the, the wrestlers would come down and they'd do their interest music. I'll never forget this. I remember uh, being out there, and then, you know, Psycho Sid, you know, Sid Vicious, Sid Justice. He was just huge, and he's even bigger in person. He came down the ramp, and I'm, we're, everybody's going, you know, crazy. Like, oh, man, Sid, Sid, Sid. And I go like this, and I'm like 16 years old. You know, it's like the height of like every like you know you're at the cusp of your life, make a decision what you want to be, and all this and that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew I was going to the Marine Corps, but I was I was excited. Um, I remember when I was like I was going up there, and like Psycho Sid's coming down the ramp, and I'm like Sid, you know Sid, and I've got my fist up like this to give the fist bump, you know. And mm -hmm. he kind of looks like he stops. He's got his jean, you know, jean shorts on, the big leather vest, man. And uh, mm -hmm. and he stops, and he looks at me, he goes. Just like that gives me a fist bump. Man. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Okay, so yeah, you've been, you are, this is real. Yeah, yeah. All and got our guilty you know, things that we do. Yeah, and the <laughs> folks out there love that. Live Free or um, RIP says, I love old school wrestling. Yeah. Joe Carpenter says, Lucha Libre. Do you? Do oh, you absolutely. Like I, I love Kalisto, like all those guys, the Luchadors, you know, Eddie Guerrero. You know, I'm a huge <laughs> Eddie Guerrero fan. He's, like okay. all those guys are all Rey Mysterio. Absolutely. Oh, okay. 
I remember, do you ever remember a guy named Mil Mascaris? That's old. That's probably before your time. I'm I'm older than you, so. Yeah, yeah, that's, way, yeah that's way back, yeah. Um, okay, so Gorillas and Guns says wrestling is real. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's physically it's real. I mean, you, you don't think those guys don't take some, some punishment. Yeah, go wrestle them. But it's, it's physically very demanding. I mean, those guys have like knee replacements, hip replacements, and – yeah, uh, it's just it's just cool, man. I, I like I just I just enjoy it because for an hour or two every night I get to relax and, and not think about, you know, who's trying to take away everybody's freedom for once. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And by the way, gorillas and guns, when we I just the video that I just put out with Reed and I talking at the fireplace. Um, I don't know. You saw that, right, Reed? Did you get a chance yeah, to watch well it? Well done. Yeah, thanks. Um, in the beginning, we were talking about gorillas, <laughs> and gorillas and guns actually was like, "Yeah, man, thanks for giving me a shout out." Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It, yeah, I wasn't intending on giving him a shout out, but okay. There you go. Yeah. You gotta I don't even know. Life. I I don't even know how I wound up talking about. Oh, you know what? Because I said we're gonna do this gorilla style. Gorilla style with a U. Yeah. Because <laughs> some people, yeah. you know, some people do get offended. Oh, so like, I don't know why, man. Yeah, Whatever. so some people, uh, let's see, like uh, Foul Mouth Actual says Mucha Lucha. <laughs> Archangel says UWF. There's good uh, ones, man. Yeah, uh, uh, Gorillas and Guns says The Ultimate Warrior. Oh, man, yeah, he was he was crazy popular, crazy popular back then. I actually yeah. met the Honky Tonk Man when I was in high school as well. When he was good, I actually met him, man. He's, he's a cool dude. Yeah. Um, yes, I remember the Honky Tonk Man. Um, the Tyvin Show says he worked with uh, the Masked Maraga. Mara yeah, Maraga? Is that, am I saying it right? I don't know. The Masked Maraga. Or Maraja, I don't know. So there you go. Um, and Joe Nutson says he was a fan of Macho Man and Jake the Snake. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Macho Man's favorite of all time. Like, but Red Heart, Macho Man, I mean, right there, man. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, it just – and it's sad, you know, Macho Man died so young. But uh, he was only like 50 – he's in his mid to late 50s. He was still young. But, uh, mm -hmm. but man, what, he's with Special Olympics. Even after he was done with wrestling for a long time, he was heavily involved with, you know, the Special Olympics, and that was his big thing. He'd always give them signed stuff and made their day. And, like, that's the kind of stuff that matters, man, making an impact on somebody – you know, when you get to be like in a position like those guys are that are ultimately popular, I mean, amongst the whole country, I mean, you get to be like that. You can let your success, you know, get to your head. You know, you can mm -hmm. uh, you, you can forget where you come from very easily, you know, forget where you come from and who you are. And, you know, when you're successful, you always face two tests. The biggest test that you well, first test that you face is that of adversity. You know, you're, everybody's going to go through adversity in life, but. You're going to go through adversity and how you deal with that matters. But then the, the one that's the most tempting, you know, the one that's the most dangerous is the test of prosperity, mm -hmm. you know, because when you get to, when you get everything you want, then you don't have to, you don't have to worry about a lot of that stuff anymore. And it's very tempting to want to just ride on your laurels and want to forget everybody um, and do that. So, you know, those guys didn't, you know, and that's yeah. why I respect them so much. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I was just talking to uh, Lola about that today, that, you know, when you become successful, you have even more responsibility now, you know, and everyone's throwing up, like, who their favorite wrestler is. I cannot <laughs> mention everyone's favorite wrestler, but, so yeah. Wrestling, fan, wrestling fans are overwhelmingly, like, freedom-minded people. I mean, they're yeah. overwhelmingly, I mean, they because they know that those guys are, I mean, you have to work your butt off to get there, you know, it's, it's not, and there's so few of them. You know, yeah. there's so few of them. You got to be talented. Yeah. But everybody loves it. Always see how it makes people smile, makes people happy. You know, rather than uh, than focus on the bitterness and the animosity. You know, that's, right. that's yeah. Joe uh, Maneri says a hacksaw Jim Duggan used to live down the road from him in Glen Falls, yeah. New York. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's an old football player who turned wrestler, man. I love hacksaw yeah. Jim Duggan. Yeah. So I know, I know, I'm leaving people's uh, favorite wrestlers out there, but I thought I'd throw that that one in. That's an extra. You know what I think? It's interesting that um, I'm always telling people like this whole gun thing that we do, and you, you're you're less like what you're doing. You're on YouTube, obviously, and you are a gun guy without a doubt. But what you do, I think, is different from what a lot of other gun guys do. But a lot of times, this gun thing that we're all in, and this thing on YouTube, comes out to me a lot like wrestling. What do you think about that? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sure. You know, there's no question. I, I, I mean, I stay out all that stuff, dude. You know, I, like, I, I, the reason I started Valorant so that I wouldn't have to deal with all that crap. You know, I wanted a <laughs> drama-free thing. You know, and 
and we are and thank god you know because uh it's it's just i love it you know it, it's a it's a good thing but yeah a lot of a lot of people i guess are, are like that but um i don't know what do you think i i just you're the same you're the same off the camera as you are on the camera man Ex I, exactly the same so what people are seeing is what they're getting from you. I can tell them that for I, sure. I try, I try to be that way, um, you know. And I'm a very introverted person, but I'm almost like uh, I don't want to say schizophrenic, but you know, <laughs> I do have two different kinds of personalities. I do enjoy just being alone, being by myself, and being very introverted. At the same time, I'm like this once I'm switched on. And I, and I try to maintain that. I'm always telling people that it's it's easier for you to stand up in front of a group of people naked than it is to really show who you are on camera. Right? There's a lot of variables there, man. Yeah. And so there are people who put on a thing, you know, where they put this thing on and it's like not really them. And then sure. it becomes a burden that they have to live up to this thing, that they're not really like this, but they've put out this personality of who they are. And um, I, I try to be that same person. I'm probably even more annoying if you ask Lola. Lola <laughs> will probably tell you I'm more annoying <laughs> in real life, you know, than I am when I'm doing things. But I do. I you know, I try to do that, but I, I, I think a lot of times um, what happens to us is that, that when we start doing these kinds of things, and even me, when I, if, you, if you go back and look at my older videos, I was not as much myself because in my mind I had like, well, this is what everyone else is doing. And so your brain tries to tell you, well, you gotta be like everyone else when you do this. But the more I did it, the more I said to myself, no, I, I need to be me, even if that's difficult or uncomfortable. No, you're right. Um, you know, unfortunately, man, you know, we live in a society where communication is instant. You know, you can talk with people thousands of miles away or at least interact with them thousands of miles away. But despite all that, <coughs> pardon me, despite all of that, I just, you, you, you know, people, people are so lonely, you know, in their lives. Uh, and, and that's, I don't know what that's due to, but there's so much loneliness with people out there. So, you know, a lot of times when, when we do a video or, you know, put something out, you know, it's like they'll feel like they're communicating with an old friend or something mm -hmm. like that or someone that they're familiar with, and that's good. But, you know, understand, uh, you know, when I, when, I do, when I do the videos, it's for the people out there that bust their rear end every day, that go out there to work. And I mean work hard, whether it's truck drivers or cops or, college students out there, you know, having to go through the rigmarole of the academic process. You know, I make a video for people like that. Uh, that That's who I make them for. I make them for the guys out and the gals out there that bust their, you know what, every day. And then they, they just want good, clean information, accurate, reliable information uh, out there. And they can do that. That's that's the reason I do the videos. You know, I don't do the videos to sell classes, man. I, first of all, I don't have any more classes to sell this year. I don't, I don't have any more. And I'm not saying that bravado or Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it like that. I just, you know, I do the video so that people can at least get something every time they watch it to get something out of the video uh, so that they can get better and, you know, or think about things differently. You know, the whole purpose of the channel is, you know, get people to think more critically about their beliefs or about what they have in their knowledge base. You know, that's one thing. And, you know, maybe use this stuff because I do a lot of range videos too, right? I do a lot of range videos about their shoot and showing the techniques. And I want people to go out and do that stuff. You know, not everybody's got the money to come to class. Not everybody's got the money to, you know, take training. And I understand that. But, uh, you know, I just, that's really the whole point. But, but yeah, with yeah. the videos, man, the videos are, you know, the way we can connect with people that we've never met before. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. And I think in these, in this day and age, you know, which, you know, there's a lot of isolation. There's a lot of loneliness. You know, there's a lot of feelings of hopelessness. You know, things are hopelessly always crappy and bad. And I don't know if they're going to get better. But you got to understand, like, you're not alone. Like, there's so many people out there that feel that same way. You just need to be in a venue where you can bring them all together. And I think that, I mean, man, yeah. you know, if you really think about it, man, how you're feeling is probably the way that they're feeling, too. Yeah, yeah. So, I was going to say that. I mean, I don't know if you personally feel that sense of loneliness. I know I do. No, no, no. You know, I I, I okay. think um, sometimes I do. Like, I actually feel that, like, loneliness that, that people feel. 
you know, most of the time I actually enjoy it. <laughs> you know, I, I like living out in the country and stuff like that, but I do, I do empathize with the loneliness that people feel out there. And I think when I make videos, I try to make a video where if I was going to the range and there was a buddy of mine there, you know, it's not, there's not a particular person that I imagine. You know, I just picture that this is someone who's my buddy and we're hanging out and we're discovering this gun and we're, we're you know, we're thinking of like, why, why do we like it or not like it or what is it that's attracting us to this thing and, and what are we enjoying about shooting it and all that. And I do, I do think of it that way. I hope it, it reflects that way to people in what I do because oh, it, does, it does, it does for sure, man. And I've watched you, you know, I've watched your channel grow over the, the years. I think we met. 2013 or 2014 I don't remember it's been a few years but I've watched your channel grow and not just grow as far as numbers but I mean you've I mean your style has evolved man um, in a good very positive way and you know it's this good thing and it's just much more relatable and not that it wasn't to begin with but you're more relatable now than you were when you first started I think that's just getting at ease in front of the camera and just you know kind of just talking to people like you always do in person mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. So we got some, um, <laughs> okay. Crispy wants to know, it, it, he says this is off topic, so he understands, but he wants to know if you got sunburned or is it the lighting? So are you just I a little, did. Extra, I, I did get yeah, are you just a little extra red right now? <laughs> but that's part of it, man. I mean, you're out, you're out in the range. It's part of the lifestyle. You're going to get raccoon eyes. You're going to get white right here. And then the, that, I mean, I have my sunglasses on, so that's just part of it. That's part about being an instructor. It's part about being on the range all the time part of the culture yeah yeah um it's it's not easy i got some i my tan has been continuing from yeah. since i was out there and it's yeah. weird because i think the first day when i was out there it was actually raining and you think that you're not getting that radiation through the rain oh yeah you are <laughs> we're closer to the sun than down there in florida man yeah absolutely so you know and then i've been doing things to keep the whole thing going so i've even got like trucker arms a little bit man there you go man those guys yeah. know what's up <laughs> yeah we got some we got some truckers uh watching this so uh rock humper says he likes you uh, from your channel but he likes you more from the po uh, podcast uh now wrestling is still cheesy but i'm glad he enjoys it so much <laughs> that's your guilty pleasure <laughs> It's, it, who said it wasn't? You know, it's it's like women have their soap operas, right? Dudes got to have their soap operas, too. I'd rather do it in wrestling than do it on YouTube. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with you, man. You can't live inside of this the whole time. Like you said, it will just you'll just burn out. So oh, yeah. it's cool. Now, let me ask you, like, where does this uh, obsession with, um, you know, where does this obsession with wrestling end? You know, like, do you have the action figures? No, 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 no. I just, I just watch it. Okay. I just, yeah, I don't do any of the action figures. And I, although when I was younger, I did have the Hulk Hogan. Uh, the doll, stretchy, you know? the stretchy. No, was it stretchy? Yeah. No, it was like a pillow. It was like, a, oh, you know, it was like oh. arms. You could like elbow smash him and everything. Okay, there was a stretchy Hulk Hogan, by the way. There was. I didn't. I did not have that one. Although I had some friends that did. Yes. There you go. No, I think it's a cool thing. So, when's the last time you actually went to a wrestling match? <sighs> Man, it's been a long time. I would say okay. probably when I was in high school. I've kind of been busy since then. Yeah, um, it's been it's been busy. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've got it right here, bro. Check this out. Oh. See? Oh, look at you! You kind of <laughs> this is on the table. Oh yeah, well, it's in the bookshelf. <laughs> it's right next oh. to it's right next to my uh, my my Civil War history books and my <laughs> this is so, and my yeah, notes of the cool. Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I have an eclectic mix of books. Yeah. Yeah, here's what um, I would tell Patriot Nurse that I think would be a cool video. She should set up a camera because I want to see what you look like when you're over there on the sofa watching wrestling. <laughs> oh, she's into, she's every bit as into it as I am. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. uh, you guys get real animated when you're watching the wrestling? Are you doing moves? Oh, yeah. you get mad? Absolutely. No, we don't. Well, sometimes we get mad and disappointed, but I mean, it's all entertainment. So. I mean, she she gets it every bit as into it as I do. We both got our favorites, you know. She's got her favorite. I got my favorite, you know. This and that. Um, but yeah, she gets into it. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm glad you guys. Uh, I'm glad you guys are able to uh, to share that. Okay, shout out to uh, Forged from Freedom, by the way. I don't know if you've ever heard of Forged from Forged from Freedom. They actually make my T-shirts, like the T-shirt that All I'm right. wearing right now. All yeah. Right. So this is. I'm gonna check this out. This is a plug, Reed. I know this is a plug. 
So, you know, but check it out. It says I'm pro choice. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, when it when it comes to guns, pro choice little, right there. I like it, man. You know, check it out right there. Got some different guns, you know. Um, don't ask me if I recognize all of them. This is an MP5. <laughs> obviously AR, AK. Oh, I got a stain right here too. There, yeah, there you go. Stain. The monster comes with that just yeah, your, this, um, is this is soup. This is this this is the soup I had before the show. <laughs> I think some kind of uh, weird. Lola, what kind of soup was that you brought? Was that like some kind of pumpkin soup? You tricked me. I knew that. I knew it. I, no, no, you, no, 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 it was summer squash. Oh, summer squash. Okay, fine. That's that's that still close. Like yellow curry, man. Yeah, it's yeah. I was thinking like Lola is tricking me with this soup because she knows I don't like pumpkin. <laughs> it's that yeah. time of year. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Like, everyone likes pumpkins. It's, you know, it's October. Everyone's doing the Halloween thing. But I'm not a fan of pumpkin and pumpkin-flavored everything. So it's all in small doses. You know, you got to do it in small doses. Yeah. And then what is this top one? Let's see. This is, like, you know, this is obviously, like, a sniper setup. Yeah. You know, real long barrel with a suppressor on it. Uh, I don't know. Someone I recognizes the gun. I see the thumb hole stock. I don't know what, I don't know what it is, though. Yeah. yeah, mine just makes noise and shoots 308. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that would be your long distance gun, you're saying? The 308? That's your. Yeah, that's yeah. my one. Yeah, you don't go to any like weird uh, calibers above that, right? Have you shot 6.5 Creed more or anything? Yep, shot those, shot the 338, shot 50 cal, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Okay. Um, but still, 308 is the thing for you, right? That's for me, man. I mean, I'm sure there's better choices out there. I just I know where my 308 hits at every distance out to, you know, 1,400 yards. Yeah. So Eric Garcia wants to know if you have shotgun training. Do you do any? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh. No, I, no, I'm not at the ridge. I do not. But I, I oh, have oh, had oh. shotgun training. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. okay. You've had the shot. So how come there isn't shotgun stuff going on at the ridge? Um, You know, I just – you know, thinking about it, I mean, shotgun's good and all that, um, but there's there's better choices, you know, for your house or for anything. I mean, shotguns, you know, like I said, man, if I had one in my hand, I wouldn't feel like, oh crap, I'm really at a disadvantage. I mean, I wouldn't think that. I would I would use it, but you know, if I'm going to use something for home defense, I'm going to use my rifle. I'm going to use my AR, my AK, you know, because it's uh, holds more ammo. It's just as lethal. You shoot it more accurately. Easier to manipulate. I mean, there's just a lot of, of positives. But dude, shotguns are fine. You know, shotguns are good. You know, they uh they work. And if you've got it, continue rocking it. You know, nobody's gonna argue and say, boy, a twelve or a twenty gauge sucks for home defense. But uh, a rifle is is most certainly. You know, you may want to look at that. You may want to look at the benefits of the rifle as well for home defense. And you know, it may change your perspective on that, especially uh, when it comes to the FBI testing as well as numerous law enforcement agencies across the country that are overwhelmingly going to patrol rifles over the shotgun. Oh, okay. So if you are going to set up a rifle for home defense, you know, what's your, I know this could probably become a long drawn out thing, but I'm sure someone's going to ask. No, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a difficult process. You're going to want a white light, good set of sights, whether it's a red dot or iron sights, a white light and a sling. And, and that's about it. And then what kind of ammo should we? Um, you know, shoot, shoot what shoots best in your gun. You're going to have to go change. You're going to have to go check that out. You know what I mean? Um, there's better choices than, you know, 55 and 62 grain ball. There's definitely better choices for your rifle. I mean, you got spear gold dot out there. You've got your, uh, black Hills TSXs. you know, you've got your, uh, black Hills, you know, Mark 262. I mean, there, you've got federal trophy bonded bear claw, Winchester solid bonded base. I mean, there's so many good choices out there. I mean, but there's better choices than 55 or 62 grain ball. Now, if that's what you use right now and you're like, Oh, I've got 55 and 60 grain ball. It's, it's okay. It's still a chunk of metal going three times the speed of sound. You're, you're going to be just fine, but there are better choices. Yeah. And, um, is there like a specific thing that you should use to not like over penetrate walls or whatever? You know, I know people, if you're going to use a rifle in the home, and people may have concerns with that. Um, oh, it's funny, man. Like people get wigged out about using a rifle for home defense, but the reality is, is that 5.56 five, penetrates less than handgun rounds. You know, I've got a video on that uh, where we actually shoot a real house. Like we go, like I, would, you, you know, we're building that cabin, and uh, oh, okay. You know, mm -hmm. So I mean, we had an old house uh, out there that we that we demolished. So we we put a new house on top of it, but. 
right before we tore it down, um, we shot it with live ammo, with AKs and 308s and pistols and. Oh, what, what is this video called, Ben? I missed this video. What is it called? Rifle, uh, rifle. It's on my channel. It's called Rifles for Home Defense. Rifles for Home Defense. Okay, I, I need to. Um, I need to go back and look at that now. Blazing. Yeah, we, yeah, go ahead. Very big detail in that video with a real house. There's not too many videos that I know of that actually go out and shoot a real house, and we actually did it because I wanted to put it to good use. I said, man, it'd be a shame if I just demolished this house without. Uh, Without actually, no. That's a good thing. Yeah. Rifles for home defense. Okay, I'm gonna look that up. Um, so you guys should definitely uh, look that up as well on, on Reed's channel and and uh, take a look at that. And then uh, Blazon twelve twelve says, uh, "What about damaging your hearing from indoor fire?" You know, it could happen. Um, but a lot of people, you know, when they when they get in that deadly force situation, a lot of people experience what's known as auditory exclusion, which means that you don't really hear stuff the way that you do. Like a lot of guys will report just hearing the buffer spring. And I'm not saying that it won't damage your hearing. Uh, what I'm saying is, like, unless you're doing that in a prolonged, like, extended thing, you're probably not going to damage your hearing. I mean, I've shot indoors. Like, I've shot inside, you know, concrete shoot houses. I've shot inside buildings. I mean, it is, it's loud, but it's not going to like destroy yours. I mean, I can't believe that. I mean, I know I have bad hearing to begin with, but I think that had more to do with the machine gun range and cigarette butts as earplugs than anything else. But thank you, United States government. But anyway, um, it's, uh, it's one of those things where, I mean, you could damage your hearing, but you need to be focused on getting these people out of your house or, 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 in, or stopping their threatening behavior rather than anything else. Yeah. So what do you think about suppressors? Uh, where do you come down? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing, man. It's most certainly going to lower the, the decibels, that's for sure. But it is going to add more length to your rifle, so you got to remember that. And if you don't train with your suppressor on, then you need to start doing that. And if you haven't practiced clearing your house with your suppressor on, then you need to do that because it does add a good amount of length to the end of that barrel. Yeah, what I did what I did for that, and this is just me, this is not Reed, because you know I believe in the ridiculous a little bit. So there's actually some barrels that you can get out there that have uh, bird cages on them. So in other words, they're shorter barrels, but they have bird cages welded on, so they come to the 16-inch length that you have to have. And and so inside of that, you could thread in a, a suppressor, and you, and it's not an SBR. If you want to go through doing the whole SBR thing, or uh, I don't know where you come down, read on uh, pistols. You can do a pistol and have that suppressed. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's going to help your hearing. I mean, that's for sure. It's it's definitely going to be quieter than or less loud than uh, than it would be without it. But you know, if you don't have one, I mean, I would definitely you need to be focused on on putting. You know, if deadly force is warranted, you got to make sure you put the rounds where they need to go, and that's what you need to be focused on. Yeah. And I know some people are like keep a you know spare of hearing protection, but. Yeah, you, are you going to take the time to put on the hearing the hearing protection? No, these guys get in your house quick, man. I mean, they get in real quick. I mean, all you got to do is watch home invasion footage and and see just how fast they get in. I mean, you're going to grab. I mean, think about the conditions you're going to do in this, and you're probably going to be asleep. And if you're not asleep, it's going to be middle of the day, so it's probably going to be with your pistol. So if it's if it's at nighttime and you're asleep and your family's asleep, you're going to be startled awake in the middle of the night not knowing what's going on other than you hear footsteps and glass or the door breaking or something. It's going to be a very stressful situation. You need to focus on getting your hand on that gun immediately and getting ready to fight somebody if you have to. So there's a lot going on in that scenario and putting on your hearing protection is not one of those things that usually comes to mind right away. Absolutely. So I'm going to do a quick shout out here because Forge from Freedom the guys that make the t-shirt with the, uh, you know, even this one that I have with the soup stain on it, just donated 20 bucks to our chat. So uh, we're going to, we, you know, since they gave us that 20 bucks nicely, we're going to mention what they said here. Awesome. And so, so Forge from Freedom says, fact, Reed once argued with me and told me off, but we're on the same side and I like and respect him because he's a no compromise person and knows right from wrong. He doesn't uh, take bullshit and is a true patriot. We need more like him. All right, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Reed tells me off all the time. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put it in that term. Well, yeah. It's not like telling me, you know, it's not telling me off. But, you know, if I have some crazy ideas, like, uh, no, man, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you know, so uh, the link is in the description. Lola wants me to tell you the link is in the description for the T-shirt. There you go, Lola. I did it. So, yeah. 
Um, you know what? I think that's how you've always been, man. You give your opinion, right? You know? That's, that's, yeah. what, that's generally what people yeah. pay money to yeah. do. You're not mean about it, so that's, you know, you're not you're not a mean guy. No, I try not to be mean at all. You know, and it's like, um, you know, I, I try to I try to explain where I'm coming from, and, and that's where I'm coming from. But at the end of the day, what it boils down to is this, man, is that I want the best for, for everybody out there that's a true American. I want the best for that. And, you know, um, there's a lot of people that have good things going. There's a lot of people that uh, that are out there, man. I want the best for people. I want the best for this country. You know, I want I want individual freedom to return. I want limited government to return. You know, I'd like people to start taking responsibility for the things that they do or that they do not do. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And I'd really like to see a country where, you know, we can have everybody out there that, that respects individual liberty. I don't know if that's possible because there's such a, a divide and that is all this. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, um, you know, I think there's so many of us out there that are on the same team, and mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what it's after. And you know, it's time to the ego, man. Like that stuff needs to go away. You know, we need to think about what's best for for the country, provided that we do it under the constraints of the Constitution. And I mean, absolutely bind us up in the chains of the Constitution so that we don't overstep anything. We don't want government to overstep it. And um, you know, that's what it's all about. And I care. You know a lot about this place and the reason why you know I'm upset some of the times is because you know, I see a lot of people that want to make it the opposite of what it is and, um, and that's very bothersome that's very bothersome especially some of the younger people out there that didn't grow up during the Cold War they didn't grow up knowing how bad communism is and what it, how badly it destroys people's lives you know how how much evil there is when you can uh, just arbitrarily take people's freedoms or right away and um, you know we're, we are simply you know, 25 years removed from the fall of the Soviet Union. And then here we are, you know, with people supporting Bernie Sanders and people supporting, you know, single payer health care and people supporting gun control. Those are all things that have been tried and failed miserably. <clears throat> yeah, you people think people wear, you know, Che T-shirts, right? They wear Che T-shirts and, you know, they think these dictators are cool dudes or something. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, Hank, I've got about I got about five minutes here. So oh, okay, yeah. Let me uh, let me uh, go through this and hit up some quick questions here. Um, does Patriot Nurse do an emergency blood transfer class? Uh, I don't think that she does. She does. She does okay. more like managing like sickness and blood pressure and diseases, and it's an in depth class. I'd highly recommend taking it because yeah, man, I almost died, and I'm glad she was there. Otherwise, I probably would have, and it was just from a simple fever. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So thanks to her for that one. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. And just Dano wants to know in the future, will you have any type of team room or would you consider a force on force class? Um, force on force class. Yeah. I mean, we, we may consider that in the, in the upcoming future. That's definitely something that would be valuable. But as far as um, having people stay on the property, nah, um, we're not going to do that. Our, our property is our home, you yeah. know, as well as our business. So we, we, we got to have, um, we've got to have, things like that. And then, by the way, these hotels and places say they're so close by. I mean, they're 15, 20 minutes away. So, and uh, I, we love our students very much. You know, I mean, we love everybody that comes through here and, you know, we want them to, after hours class, hanging out with us, it's exhausting for us, but more importantly, it's more exhausting for them as well because they've learned so much through the whole day. I think it's necessary to get away from that stuff and just relax and decompress. I mean, you can't, talk about guns and firearms all the time you know it's an exhausting thing I, yeah. I mean, and don't get me wrong I love it when people ask me questions about guns and it's good because I remember how, having to learn this stuff too but I understand that I'd rather have people ask like hey man like uh, who's your favorite founding father or, you know what did, what uh, what's your favorite band you know stuff like that yeah and, yeah to know, that end uh, blazing 1212 wants to know if he can buy you a bear when he takes the uh, class like after class um after maybe i don't know like probably i don't really go out or anything like that but i do like cigars i do like it you know that kind of oh, stuff okay right? there you go there you go yeah. folks cigars yeah. you don't have to and look you guys spend <laughs> no <laughs> you guys spend money coming here to begin with please don't think that it's expected it's not and, and i'm look i'm grateful like I, i'm grateful when, when people bring that stuff but you guys spend so much money as it is we don't expect anything like that but we love it but our whole, like the hotels there in, in Harrogate and Middlesbrough, they love our students because they're so polite and friendly. And but yeah, you guys don't have to, you don't have to bring any of that stuff unless you really, really feel compelled to. But understand, yeah. like we're we're there to serve you, not the other way around. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the biggest reward that Reed gets is just teaching and and knowing that he's doing something to, uh, you know, to be part of the fight here. Okay, last question, because I know the wrestling. I know the wrestling's come up. I <laughs> see you sitting on the edge of your seat. So I know the rest. And we've been going for a while. Um, you know, I get some messages in here. Reed for president. Uh, would you ever run for president or any other political office? No, I don't think so, because you know this is my place is teaching people how to defend themselves and defend their country that's my place and if there's any other leadership that that needs to happen after that we can we can maybe explore that but as far as the political process um i don't think i'm a political leader i don't have the patience for it uh, and and on top of all of that i a big aversion towards washington dc i think that it is literally the capital from the hunger games and I okay. would never, ever, ever want to go to that cesspool of filth and lies uh, and, and subject myself to their mosh pit of, of horrible ideas and control and absolute tyranny. I would never, ever, ever want to go to that evil city, the Babylon of the West. I would never, ever want to go to that place. And if you go, no matter how, no matter how uh, freedom minded of a person that you are, your environment makes a big difference in how you act. And if you go someplace where freedom is, is valued and cherished, that's what's going to be. But even if you're the most freedom-minded person, if you would go there and spend a majority of the year there, I couldn't see how anyone could not be corrupted by such evil, vile, sickening people. And so, no, I would never uh, never run for political office. But my job well, is so, to try. Someone has to do it, though, right? I mean... Yeah, I mean, you, you would think, but I mean, how often do you have to do it? I mean, the original Congress was designed to meet there only a handful of days a year, and mm -hmm. then they're there all the time now, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, and, and, and actually, serving there came at great cost financially and, and uh, mentally to the early founders that were there. It came at a great cost to them, and they didn't look at it as a career. They looked at it as a, a temporary position of, of leadership that they were supposed to have. But no, I don't, I, I would never want to run for office and I would much rather have people learn how to protect their rights and their community um, than anything else. All right, cool. Oh, and, cool. And one more quick one, 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 people want to see you do more history more. videos. Yeah, I, I love it. I love doing it, you know, and uh, I've, I've done a, a couple, you know, with, with things, but uh, you know, that takes time, you know, to research it. And um, I've had, I have a lot of, and here's why it takes time guys, because I've got to research, not re I've got to revisit the stuff that I've that I've read. That way, I can give a more thorough presentation or a present, you know, with the information. A lot of my videos are played in high schools around the country, in middle schools. So these teachers will play my videos for their students. I'm very humbled by that they would even think about and consider doing that. So I've got to really watch the language, which is why you don't hear profanity in the videos, and and that's just not me anyway. Uh, secondly. Um, you know, I've really got to make sure my facts are bulletproof, right? Because mm -hmm. the students need to learn what the truth is. And furthermore, you know, all the, uh, you know, re revisionist historians are going to come in with their little warped vision of reality. So it does take time, you know, for, I mean, Hank, you know, making a video, even if it's just a five minute video, I mean, that takes hours of work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you. So. Yeah. And I've you know. got a lot of stuff to do during the day. And I, I love making the videos, like I said, to connect with people, but you know, it takes a lot of my day out. To, it takes a lot to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm not going to keep you from the wrestling. No, it's okay. Uh, no, thanks for thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. I know the folks out there really appreciate it. And I just want to tell people, if you're not already subscribed to um, to Reed's channel, just like go there, subscribe. You're going to get a lot of good information. As Reed was saying, it's uh, it's Reed Henricks, right? Is that I'm I'm looking to see what the actual uh, YouTube YouTube name is. Yeah, my, my YouTube channel name is is my name, Reed Hendricks. Yeah. So, you know, go there, subscribe. Uh, there's lots of good info. I know we got a comment from someone talking about the cost and everything. And that's why Reed's making the video. So go support that. And, and if you get a chance and you're able to, definitely go out there, take some classes. Yeah, we don't we don't charge for the videos, man. We don't do we don't do any fundraising or anything. That's just videos in our spare time that we're able to do. I know some people do, and that's how they that's how they provide for the family, and I respect right. that. But as far as mm -hmm. us you know, we do it all pro bono. I'm not expecting anything from it. And, uh, you know, so if you're asking about Patreon, I don't, I don't do yeah. any of that stuff. Yeah. If you yet. want to support Reed, go take a class. Yeah. Or spread the word, you know, spread, yeah, that's spread the word. Nice. Yeah. We'd yeah. love to see it, you know, and, and, uh, help, help you in any way that we can. Absolutely. All right. Any other things you want to say, man? 
No, thanks, Hank. I, I value our friendship more than anything else. And, uh, and I value the fact that you think highly enough of me to have you on the show, to have me on the show. And it uh, means a lot to me, man. And uh, you're one of a handful of guys that, that's a real, a real friend that, has, that, that believes in morals over, over profit or anything like that. And that's one of the reasons why we're friends and why I like hanging out with you besides business and all that. Yeah. Thanks, Reed, man. I'm honored by the value that you, you know, put in our relationship. I feel the same way. Thank you. You know, and it's it's always fun talking to you. I always learn things. You know, you always give me things to think about. So, um, and of course, we'd love to have you back on. We'd love to have Patriot Nurse come on. Everyone's demanding Patriot Nurse. <laughs> well, she's much more pleasant to look at than me. I mean, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to say it on air, but that is very, very, very true. <laughs> but I do have better hair, though. Uh, well, she'll admit it. She'll oh, admit it. She she oh. admits to your awesomeness because I hear her saying no. Hair. The hair, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh. And she's okay. much nicer than I am, too, much nicer. <laughs> I can hear her giggling in the background. So, yeah, you know what? I like both of you guys. I like to see you come on. Everyone's telling me to tell you thank you. So, you know, thanks once again. Um, before I end it, I want to remind everyone, um, you know, I want to thank everyone for being here, sharing the videos and all that kind of stuff. I want to thank the, the folks who support us on Patreon. It's Patreon slash Hank Strange. Of course, we do have people that sponsor us. That's Rand CLP, Andrew's Custom Leather, okay, Safety Harbor Firearms, and uh, Big Daddy Gun. So big shout out to those guys. Thanks for supporting us and allowing us to say whatever we say on here and uh, bring good folks like Reed to your attention. All right, that's it. I'm out of here. Peace.